Good day there guys, it's your Aussie hubby Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. If you love this bloody good content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification because I post every day. Yep, every day, I never miss a day. With that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and let's get right into it. My boyfriend, 19 male, has given me, 19 female, an ultimatum on the clothing I wear. My boyfriend and I have been together for a few months after taking a break for a year because I moved away that year. Neither of us wanted to do long distance, and neither of us got into a relationship with anyone else. Before that, we were high school sweethearts for two years. Back then, he didn't care what I wore, or at least didn't communicate to me that he found certain clothing, shirts with midriffs showing, tied addresses, or me posting vacation pictures, such as me on the beach in a bikini, uncomfortable for him. Now that we have gotten back together, he tells me it's a boundary for him that I wear more modest clothes because he doesn't want other men to see parts of his girlfriend that only he should see. (laughs) Insecure. (laughs) God, I'm choking on the insecurity. (laughs) It's thick. Oh, God. He told me that before, he just felt happy that he got to be with me because he had liked me for years and didn't feel like it was his place to tell me what to wear, but now that we're back together, it's different. Yesterday, we went through my clothes, and he told me what he is okay with me wearing and what he isn't. There was one specific dress that I loved, and he told me that it's a no, and I started crying. We almost broke up over this one dress, until he asked me what I care more about, him or the dress. Obviously, I told him I care more about him. It's very difficult for me because I'm very into fashion, and I don't see these clothes as too revealing or sexual at all. I also struggled with body image for years when I was younger, and this has taken me back to the mindset of not being able to wear certain clothes because I wanted to hide my body. However, I'm very dependent on him and value his opinion a lot. I don't know what to do. I'ma just, I'm just stop you there for one second. Why? He's 19. You're 19. Have some self-awareness, your kids! He hasn't been in a relationship like this before. What does he know? He's talking like he's an authority on the matter. He has no clue what he's talking about. Man watched a few podcasts on TikTok and thought he was the arbiter of uh, relationships and women's values. He's just an insecure little boy. That's all he is. That's what all of us are sometimes, but we don't try to control others. My honest advice? Don't even try to salvage it, just break it up, tell him what he did wrong, why he was wrong, and let him mature and figure this stuff out by himself, because you can't allow this to continue and enable this behavior. If it makes him uncomfortable, that means he doesn't trust you in the relationship, and why should you respect that? Why should you trust him if he doesn't trust you? Let him go, let him do some growing up. In the comments... Razzledazzle626 says, Why do you want to be with someone so badly who is this controlling? OP replies, He got sad when I told him my friend said he was controlling. He tells me I can do what I want, but he won't be with me. We were both crying because we didn't want to break up over something as small as clothes, but right now we are not talking while he waits for me to choose the dress or him. (laughs) It's such a hard choice, this one. It only starts with the clothes. Cartman replies, He will push his insecurities onto you in the form of control until you are no longer yourself. Leave now before he forbids you from having certain friends, watching certain shows, eating certain foods, etc. Laura Babora325 says, It starts with the clothes, then what you eat, then where you go, then who you see, and that includes family members. Then he has you in a chokehold and alienated from everyone, and he abuses you, and you have no one to turn to. Get out. My husband has never policed what I wore. He may express his opinions here or there, but he has never said, it is me or the dress. He even likes when I dress up for him. What does your boyfriend expect you to do? Wear a robe that covers you head to toe, only showing your eyes? Your boyfriend is a creep. Whiskey Girl 81 says... Take some advice from someone who has been married 25 wonderful years and who grew up in a household with people like your boyfriend. Leave. Choose the dress. My husband has never told me what I can and cannot wear, even if he didn't like it. He said nothing. Your boyfriend is being controlling. It starts small, like telling you what you can or cannot wear, and it gets bigger and worse. He's trying to manipulate you into doing what he wants. 
Choose the dress, you lose me. If you want to stay with me, then you have to dress how I want you to. You're still young and you have a whole life ahead of you. You'll find someone who loves you for who you are and how you dress. He is not the one. Please choose the dress. And OP replies, Thank you. I really appreciate your advice as someone who has been in a long and loving relationship, which is what I aspire to have. This is my first relationship, so it's hard for me to compare if what he says and does is right or wrong. He was there for me when my sister was in a horrible accident and through the pandemic, and we text and call constantly throughout the day, so it's hard for me to imagine life without him. Maybe it's good to just rip the band-aid off. I haven't been feeling like myself the past few months either. And now for the update. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for all the support and advice on my last post. I read every single comment and wanted to reply, but the reply option wasn't available. I'm new to Reddit, and I'm not sure why the post was capped and doesn't allow any more comments. But after feeling encouraged by your comments, I had the confidence to tell him that I choose being able to wear what I want. I reiterated how important fashion is to me and how his demands were bringing me back to a dark time of negative body image. We came to an agreement that there are fundamental differences in our values and what we want out of a relationship, because I want to be encouraged and uplifted while he wants a girl whose body is only his to look at. By the way, I wanted to say that this dress was not scandalous. It is tight in some parts, but it doesn't show a lot of skin. He told me that we were done. He then blocked me on everything because, if he saw me, he would never be able to get over me. I cried for a couple of hours and then got myself collected. I made an appointment with a therapist and got a membership at a different gym than him. But then five hours later, he unblocked me and sent a long paragraph about how he shouldn't have been so hasty and was willing to change to make things work. Yesterday, he texted me some more asking to talk in person. I agreed to meet up for a dinner in a public place. I wore the dress. He brought me a bouquet of white roses and my favorite chocolate. He told me that I look beautiful and that the five hours without me hurt so much and at this point, he doesn't care if I'm walking around naked as long as he's the one that I'm with. Can this man's fundamental values really change overnight? Also, I felt almost giddy and excited once I was done crying, but now I feel bad for him. Thanks Jerry, I'll take love bombing for 1000. <laughs> Gaslighting, yes, love bombing, yes. You in the back there, yes. Toxic cycle that is starting now that will only repeat itself. You are so right, let's start this trauma cycle. In the comments, Zesty Close Salary says, treats you like shit, then brings you flowers. Wash, rinse, repeat. That is how the cycle begins. Puzzle Headed Ad1634 says, exactly this OP, plus you were doing fine without him and he saw that, so he backtracked. He thought that you were going to be beside yourself and fall at his feet. Who the F breaks up with their girlfriend because she wants to wear her own clothes? Please, don't take this dude back. He's just messing with you. Because it's the start of abuse. He will shower you with love and then abuse you emotionally over things. Shower you with gifts, rinse and repeat. Run. Frolican Detour says, His attempt at controlling you failed, so now he's going to lull you into a false sense of security and hope that the next time he tries it, you'll be too invested to walk away. He's an Andrew Taint wannabe. She called his bluff, now he's crawling back. This will not end well. I Am Hurting Cat says, This is called love bombing, and it's another part of the cycle of abuse. He's just trying to worm his way back into your good graces. As someone old enough, literally, to be your grandmother and a veteran of a couple abusive relationships, please believe me when I say, Girl, run! Run! Do not walk, get away from this man, and do not look back. Random Internet Stranger says, The classic, I will shower her with love and affection so that then I will control her again. She'll be confused and maybe this time I'll succeed in tearing down her self-esteem so that she stays with me. Run, OP. Run. Block him. He's not changed in just five hours. The only thing he's changed is his tactics on how he's going to control her, and even that hasn't really changed much. 
Yep, war doesn't change, just the battlefield. Uh, I wish OP all the best. I hope that we don't have another update where they're like, you know what, it's been three years and I got a baby and I'm trapped with this man now. What do? If we get another update, of course, I will read all of this again, laugh again, and then, hopefully, we get a good ending to this. Posted by user Hamdala, titled... Boyfriend, 30 male, and I, 22 male, were mugged. He sprinted off and left me alone with the mugger. He claims he was running for help, but I didn't hear from him for over an hour. I'm just wondering how bad I should blow up his crap. Edit, sorry about the title, I'm 22 female. On Tuesday night, my boyfriend and I were out. He parked in an alley because it's free. As we got out of his car, this tiny little homeless looking guy stepped out with a screwdriver and said something like, all I need is a hit. Give me 20 bucks and no one gets hurt. My boyfriend sprinted away. He didn't even look behind him, so I was stuck with the mugger, and since I only had my phone on me, he rubbed his hands all over me while holding the screwdriver to my throat. He wasn't getting off on it, but it was still so traumatizing as he thought that I was hiding money in my bra and underwear. I kept hoping that Aiden would be coming back with the cops, but nothing. The homeless guy eventually realized I had nothing and just left down the other end of the alley. I walked around the corner and less than a block away there was two police officers. So I told them and all of a sudden downtown is lit up and they were able to find the guy in less than 5 minutes. I rode with the police to the station to ID the guy. Maybe an hour later Aiden calls and said, I have the police, are you okay? And I exploded on him, telling him that I'm at the effing police station and have been for an hour. He tried to tell me he was so scared he didn't know what to do and ran immediately to the police. I told him he was a liar because the two police I'd found had been there all night and he must have run past them. After some serious arguing, he admitted that he had gone to hide in a park about three blocks away. I was disgusted and he kept hiding when he heard all of the sirens because he thought that meant I had been stabbed or worse. What in the actual F? I told him to come pick me up and he said he couldn't because he doesn't like cops and is afraid they would laugh at him. Well, he was right, because two very cool young cops gave me a ride home and they laughed and joked about him the entire way. Yesterday, he finally called at around noon and I told him don't bother as we're broken up. He then spent the next 8 hours texting me a combination of calling me names, begging me to come back to him, and explaining what he had done had been the smartest thing for the both of us. He said had he not run, his natural rage would have taken over and he would have killed the guy. Sure. My question is, how scorched earth do I go in this breakup? Let him have some dignity, or do I blow up his shit? TLDR, boyfriend left me during a mugging. Do I ruin his life in the breakup process? Me personally, everything he's saying is an outright lie. I'm just getting those cringe Tumblr post vibes. It's like, babe, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. I'd turn into a werewolf. I'd rip him to shreds. Oh my god, don't get me out at a full moon. I would absolutely tear that homeless person apart and it'd be worse for the both of us. Like, shut up, man. Shut up. You are not that guy. This boyfriend is a pussy, he's going to do it again, he's spoken through his actions. Taking this guy back would only further put your life in danger because any whiff of actual danger to both of your lives, he is out of there. There is no fight, there is only flight with this man and he has proven that. Break up, go as scorched earth as you want because he has shown he doesn't actually value your life at all. In the comments, Blonde Throwaway says, quote, He said had he not run, his natural rage would have taken over and he would have killed the guy. I ugly laughed at this. Bravo, OP, for taking decisive action and leaving this loser in the dust like he deserves. I don't think you'll get any real satisfaction from anything but blocking him and moving on with your life. Sky replies, Brave Sir Robin ran away, bravely ran away, away. Oh my god, I love Monty Python. The respectable JC says, Just ghost him, you know, like he did to you. It's for the best. I think he'll understand. I mean, she might end up killing him with all that natural rage after all. New Ginger says, Sounds like your ex-boyfriend has warrants. He didn't want to be there when the cops came as they would ask him for his name and ID. 
Probably for effing parking tickets. Chucky or Law says. <laughs> Based reference. I don't know. He really just sounds like a pussy. I'm not saying that in some kind of keyboard warrior tough guy way. I hope that I would never ever do that, obviously, but I'm not trying to put myself in his shoes. That said, it really doesn't come across as suspicious to me at all. Just cowardly. But like, really cowardly. Like, Aiden, bro, come on, man. Quotes, he said that had he not run, his natural rage would have killed the guy. Thanks, I hate him. Back up to the post, we have an edit. Guys, I'm floored by this response. I have almost 1,700 unread messages in my inbox and feel like I missed out on the conversation when I was at my internship today. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't heard from Aiden since last night, so I hope that means he got the effing message. I don't know what I'm going to do, as a day monitoring aluminium reactions has calmed me down a bit. Not sure, but this is my biggest Reddit post ever by a long shot. And now, on to the update. Well, that was Thursday, and I think I was a little wound up and trying to find the humor in the situation. On Friday, it really settled in that I was assaulted with a screwdriver held to my throat. I know that wasn't the mugger's intent, but the outcome was the same. I've spent the last two days in my room just trying to figure out who I talk to. I haven't told anyone and even tried to go out last night, but was too afraid to walk to my car late, so I left really early and then walked with my keys between my fingers, between my car and apartment, and haven't really left. I would love any advice on how to get on with getting past this. As for Aiden, he has left me about a dozen angry emails and VMs blaming me for parking where he did, not running away like he did, and then exposing him to the police. He's an incredible piece of shit, but since I don't want to talk about any of it, I haven't blown his shit up, as I asked in the original. Not sure what I'm going to do. I've blocked him in every way I know, but just now he created a fake Gmail to berate me again. I think everyone was right, he has some sort of police past, along with being an incredible coward, and he thinks that I'm going to let them know where to find him. I will talk with the ADA sometime this week, as well as victim advocates, and seeing how this will truly blow his shit up, maybe I'll slip his name along. So that's where we all are. Thanks for reading and keeping up with my drama. And now in the comments, Monsieur Ledoud says, Right now you need to focus on yourself. Please consider counselling. Talking to a professional about this colossal violation and its aftermath will likely do you a world of good in the long run. I'm sorry Aiden outed himself yet again as the cowardly piece of crap he so clearly is, but perhaps one way to get him to back off is to tell him that your next step will be to contact the police about his harassment in order to get a restraining order against him. If he's afraid of you alerting authorities to his whereabouts, it might get him to finally go away. To be honest, if the harassment continues, I would pay a visit to the police with copies of his emails without saying a word to him. Let him learn the consequences of his choices the hard way. I wish you the best, and I'm sorry that this has happened to you. And I agree with Monsieur Ledoud, I feel like this is the best way forward for OP in this situation. No one deserves to be put through what they did, and no one deserves to be abandoned and then abused after the fact. And again, he is cowardly, he is a piece of crap, he has once again outed himself. Really does feel like a restraining order is the only way to keep Aiden and people like this away. But I want to turn this to you guys. What do you guys reckon of this situation? Would you have done the same as OP? And what would you do going forward? I want to know what you have to say down in the comments below. Our next post is by user ThrowRA88Rising, titled... Am I the a-hole for not lying to my boyfriend about my match day? So I, male 28, and my boyfriend, male 32, have been together for four years. Our relationship has been amazing, except for when we have special occasions or gatherings. He is a really sensitive and emotional type, to the point that it gets awkward and embarrassing. Match day is a day when med students find out where they will do their residency. I've been extremely stressed because I was hoping for my first choice and didn't need any extra stresses. My boyfriend asked what time the event that my program was hosting to reveal the match day results and I just knew that he would be over the top with emotion and cause me embarrassment, so I lied and told him a time well after I would find out. Match day was Friday and I got my first choice. My boyfriend arrived an hour before the event ended and was visibly upset with me. 
He went home after and won't return my calls. Am I the a-hole? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. My lying to my boyfriend to avoid him making an emotional scene and causing him to miss a very important event in my life. Well, based off of the information provided thus far, I'm gonna go with you're the a-hole for this one. You're excluding your partner on the sole basis that they're going to be emotional and you're going to feel embarrassed by their emotions. If that's the case, why did you choose to be with this person? And if you realized that lying by omission was wrong, then you obviously know that you've done something wrong here. There was a reason that you didn't tell your boyfriend to come at this specific time. If you needed to hide it from him, you knew that it was going to hurt him. You're intentionally hurting your boyfriend. There's no wonder that your boyfriend is not responding to you. In bird culture, that is considered a dick move. So yes, you're the a-hole. In the comments, Big Boy Big Problem says, You're the a-hole. Relationships are built on honesty and trust. You find a man being emotional too embarrassing to be around. Please take a look at yourself and ask why you don't want to be with this man who is openly vulnerable with you, which is such an amazing trait for him to have. You should never have lied to him, and if you find his authentic self to be too embarrassing for you, then do him a favor and break up with him. Bone Steel replies, There is being able to show emotion and going over the top. Not everyone wants every event to be a cry fest. Big Boy Big Problems replies to that, Okay then, don't enter a relationship with someone like that and then exclude them from the important moments of your life because of it? Belkira Hotep replies, My ex-husband had a company picnic while we were still married, and he told me that it was employees only. I said, cool, have fun, see you later. And when he got home, he was complaining about his boss at the event and said that the guy berated an employee at the picnic in front of his wife and kids. I sympathized at first and then said, wait, I thought it was employees only. He said that he didn't want me there because he hated his job, hated his boss, and he didn't want me to see him in that environment. When I got upset that he lied to me, he said he didn't tell me beforehand because he knew that I'd be upset and we'd fight just like we are now. I said that I was upset that he was lying to me. And I can admit I probably would have been hurt, but at least he would have been honest and I would have gotten over it. We divorced later for other reasons, but that picnic still sticks with me. Beneficial Math replies, That sounds exactly like something my rat bastard of an ex-husband would have done. He died about 10 years ago, and to the best of my knowledge, he never found another woman foolish enough to take him on. Sometimes, I wonder if there is a 3D printer churning out endless copies of douchebags like him. Coffee Addict says, Yes, you're the a-hole for lying instead of having an open conversation with him. Now he's going to question everything you say. OP replies, I will try to be more honest with him about this. Coffee Addict retorts, I'm glad to hear that. Communication and trust are huge for a healthy relationship. Squat Cobbler says, You're the a-hole. Your relationship is wonderful, but you're embarrassed to be seen with him at any gatherings or events? Do you hear yourself? And OP says, I just wanted this moment to be about me and not my boyfriend crying for 15 minutes. Flying Cactus 2047 replies, Does he cry super loudly or accompany it with a bunch of emotion or something? Like, does it actually draw attention, or do you think that he's quietly crying for too long? Because I would hate the first option as well, but the second of him just being emotional for a while should be okay. OP replies, Usually it's very noticeable and can draw attention. Pleasant Koala replies, Is he able to calm himself down, or does the behavior continue until others come to calm him down? Not my username 1986 says, OP said in another comment that he caused such a scene at a friend's baby shower while the guest of honor was opening presents that OP had to bring him outside to calm him down. This is not remotely normal behavior. Back up to the post, we have an edit. Thank you everyone who has commented and gave me advice. I'd like to preface by saying I love my boyfriend and know what I did was shitty and could have been avoided by a conversation. That being said, he did text saying he wants to talk. I'll update when I can. Edit 2, yes, I know the title is wrong, I was thinking between two different titles and fudged it up. Sorry, to those who keep asking, I do love and adore my boyfriend. And now, on to the update. So wow, the response I got back from this has been pretty massive. Unfortunately, I can't read all of the comments, but I'm surprised to not automatically be shunned as the asshole. 
I know what I did was not only messed up, but lacked consideration for my boyfriend. He texted me, yay, last night, and said that he wanted to talk about what happened. My stomach dropped, like that feeling you get on a roller coaster. We met this morning at our favorite little bakery, and I got him his favorite macarons and breakfast sandwich. At first, I was really nervous and anxious that what I did was irreversible. I of course told him that not only was I sorry, but explained why I did it. We hadn't really had this kind of conversation, so he was pretty taken aback by why I didn't want him there. Fortunately, he said that he understood, but was really hurt that I didn't talk to him and found a reason to lie to him instead. He said that he still wanted to be with me, yay again, but that we should try counseling both together and separate. He was concerned that his many emotional bouts caused attention to be taken away and placed on him whenever we went to any special event. After breakfast, we just walked around his neighborhood and held hands, not really into PDA due to trauma. He invited me back to his place to see the dog, and so now I'm just writing this laying in bed. I might have another update, I don't know. Thank you to everyone who said you're the a-hole, and anyone else who did not, thank you for your comments too. In the comments, Silly Measurement asks, Were you matched in the same state or will you need to move? Will the matching affect your relationship moving forward? And OP replies, That's for another post. Right now, we're just taking it a day at a time. Squidgemobile says, Frankly, match day parties are such a terrible idea. One of my closest friends broke down crying because she got so far down on her list and other people were visibly distressed. Two people left when they didn't match. It's just a disaster waiting to happen. Doc Throwaway 2020 says, As far back as I'm aware, 2016 match here, you find out the Monday before results are released if you matched at all or not. The rest of the week is for those who didn't initially match to soap into programs that didn't completely fill. So those two people wouldn't have been surprised at the party if they didn't match, period. What may have happened is that they were applying for a competitive specialty and appropriately also ranked programs in a backup specialty. In that case, Monday is only a small relief because it's Friday when you find out if you got your dream or not. Mr. Slab Bulkhead says, You are really lucky he didn't break up with you. Appreciate that he still loves you, devote yourself to strengthening the relationship, and get into that counseling with him. And now, on to the final update. Many of you were spot on about my boyfriend not only being amazing, but also sensitive. Something I find cute as well, and thoughtful. As soon as I typed up the first update, I went to take a shower. Upon getting out, my boyfriend is in a suit and there is an envelope in his hand. Yeah, I think now would be cause to cry. He said that we can do our own match ceremony. Inside the envelope was a paper saying you match with insert hospital and OP's boyfriend. Yeah, I did tear up and my boyfriend absolutely cried, but my god he is a pretty crier. And yes, we have made sure that we are on the same page. In the comments, what the F says, very happy update. Still very glad that he's willing to get therapy and that he recognizes that taking attention away from everyone else during their big moments is a problem. Not gonna lie, finding out that his family call themselves crying connoisseurs heavily hints that he has had to have big outsized emotional reactions or not be taken seriously. Similar to people who don't take pain seriously if someone isn't screaming, or people who feel the need to fake a loud orgasm because their partner doesn't believe a small one. That shit will not only impact his relationships in terms of people not wanting him there, but also can be really rough on him internally also. Best of luck to you two. Accomplished Cheek 59 says, I can be like the boyfriend, and my emotions are always close to the surface. I can't always control it and find it highly embarrassing, but I ensure it doesn't affect anyone around me. I remove myself from situations if I'm getting too emotional, get myself under control, and return as quietly as possible so that people barely notice I was gone. All of my family and friends know this about me and appreciate that I refuse to steal their thunder by behaving inappropriately. There is no way the boyfriend doesn't know that crying for 15 minutes at someone else's baby shower isn't appropriate reaction. It steals focus. Suddenly, the mother-to-be isn't the star because everyone's trying to stop you from crying. If your partner is trying to avoid you being present at certain big moments in their life because they know you will be so emotional that they have to care for you rather than enjoy their moment, then they are not the problem. 
From personal experience, there are ways to ensure that you can be present for their moments and hide a too big emotional reaction. While this is sweet, I think OP got a lot of unnecessary hate. His solution wasn't the best one, but if the boyfriend refuses to regulate his emotions, there aren't a whole lot of other options. I guess my final word on this one, I obviously went into it with limited information, and I still stand by that initial you're the a-hole. But actually after getting more information, I think it's a no a-holes here situation. I just think that these guys need to communicate more, and it is good that they are communicating now. OP has redeemed themselves in my eyes, and that they are willing to get help and go to therapy and talk with their partner. I do hope that in the future they can come to better compromises together, and that the boyfriend can be included in big events without OP having to worry. Again, I would like to know what you guys think of this one down in the comments below. Our next post is titled, Am I the a-hole for kicking my husband out of the delivery room after he started crying? So my husband Kevin, male 31, and I, female 27, welcomed our first baby a week ago. Kevin is the type of person that gets stressed out easily and reacts to events negatively. We've had conversations about his ability to handle being in the delivery room. I said if he couldn't be there it was fine as I know how he reacts under pressure and I could just have my mum there instead. He said he could 100% handle anything and promised to be supportive and positive. I went into labor alone, he met me at the hospital, and when he entered the room, he looked so stressed out and overwhelmed already. He started moving around periodically, completely ignoring me. He got more visibly stressed when my pain got intense. He took my hand when I started having contractions and kept clutching it, almost stopping blood circulation. My entire arm went numb. I felt strained, and although I was in intense pain, I saw his face. It was so red, and there was a visible vein in his forehead, and it looked like it was about to blow up. It was not helpful at all. In fact, it was frustrating, and it affected my emotions negatively. But still, I was willing to suck it up, and then suddenly he started crying, like literally sobbing really loud. This sent me into full panic mode. I found myself screaming, telling him to stop several times, and as a result, he literally yelled back in my ear. The nurse got involved, and I told her to get him out of there. He tried to argue with me, but wasn't given a chance, and was pressured to leave the room. I didn't see him afterwards, after our daughter was born, and while I was resting, he didn't show up either. His mom kept calling to see where he was. She stayed with me, and I haven't seen him till the day that I was discharged. We had a big fight at home. He kept lashing out when I said how bad it was for him to ghost me when I needed him. He said that I shouldn't expect him to stick around after cruelty and selfishly kicked him out of the room and robbing him of an opportunity to see his daughter's first breaths. I explained that he was causing me to panic with how he was crying, but he accused me of making up excuses and I was purely at fault for kicking him out and getting the staff to gang up on him no matter how hard I try to spin it. He said that as a dad, he should have the liberty to be in the room no matter how he behaves and whether I like it or not. I got tired of arguing and I told him to stop, and he said he will, but he will never forget what I have cost him that day, and then he walked out. I was so mad and I took some time to cool off, then when I unpacked my bag I found a small box that contained a necklace with our daughter's name. I felt awful knowing that Kevin left it for me to wear at the hospital, but the argument happened and he spent the entire time in the car in the hospital's parking lot. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I could be the a-hole for kicking him out and robbing him of the joy of welcoming our daughter that he looked forwards to for months. I believe I have made a selfish decision. While I do agree that in some respects your decision was selfish, it had to be selfish. It had to be a selfish decision. He was destroying the moment. He was like verbally attacking you there. He was stressing you out much more than you needed to be stressed. His actions were not those of a supportive partner. They were those of someone that cannot handle their own emotions. Has no self-awareness of the fact that yes, this is an important moment, but if I'm going to ruin the moment, if I'm going to cause more stress than necessary, if my presence is a net negative, maybe I should not put myself in this stressful environment to begin with. Maybe I have some issues that I need to sort out beforehand. 
Yes, this is a very much momentous occasion for me myself, but will I taint this memory? Will I hurt my partner with my actions and my words? It seems as though he lacks any ounce of self-awareness. His actions were in fact selfish. This is yet another occasion where it appears that communication prior to the event would have helped smooth this over, but he has done so much damage to you during an incredibly vulnerable moment that he deserved to be kicked out of that room. He deserved to be kicked out of the hospital. He's actually an asshole for what he's done to you, so not the asshole OP. He sucks for that. In the comments, Stoat King says, not the a-hole. He said as a dad he should have liberty to be in the room no matter how he behaves and whether I like it or not. I laughed at this because it is so wrong and entitled. Forgive me for laughing. It's not funny, but like, wow. That is balls to the wall delusion. Double wow. Not only did you not need him, but he was upsetting you. That is the opposite of fulfilling your needs. In the end, who is in the delivery room is up to you. I imagine this is usually based on who you think will be most helpful and or supportive. He was neither, he was quite the opposite. He needs to give his head a good shake. His role was one of support and he failed on every level. Good for you for putting your foot down and to the staff who did the right thing. Quote, he kept lashing out when I said how bad it was for him to ghost me when I needed him. It was bad. Some would say borderline unforgivable and then to come back and double down with this untimely and even more inappropriate tantrum? I can't even. He was a huge asshole for taking off after getting kicked out and for being entirely selfish at the time and now. Maybe he couldn't handle his behavior at the hospital, but he is still blaming her and not himself, and it's so shitty. Nothing Incriminating says, Yeah, the fact that this wasn't a moment of panic thing, but something he has rationalized and doubled down on for days, has honestly just terrifying implications for how he's going to parent. A man who will make someone in labor bear the undue burden of managing his mental illness will do the same for a small child. He will lash out, stress the kid out for reasons she can't possibly understand, and then refuse to apologize. She will grow up with the message that daddy's cruel, volatile behavior is her fault for not carefully controlling herself, bottling up her own emotions, refusing to express her own needs. OP, do you have any idea how badly that can F up a kid? Especially a girl? I don't want to catastrophize because I don't know your husband or whether he is willing to entertain psychiatric intervention when push comes to shove but this issue is a poison pill for your family, and you need to acknowledge that. I'm a 28-year-old woman who grew up with that dad, and as that kid you described. Can confirmed, it effed me up in a lot of ways. OP, please, please try to talk to your husband about therapy before your little girl gets too much older. His behavior set off so many red flags, and both you and your newborn deserve better. Epijade says... Oh, hello, you just described my childhood, and it sucked. Mine too, can confirm. BG48111 says, same for me. Anything that would set him off had to be controlled. As a teen, I was socked in the face because I was too snarky for him. If I cried, he would get angry and mock me. I'm looking at a milestone birthday, and I'm still afraid to cry because of the conditioning. I really hope that OP realizes her husband is wrong and she is not to blame for his self-control issues and won't let him control her daughter. Not the a-hole. Kevin needs therapy ASAP. He is right to be angry, but his anger is misdirected. It should be aimed at himself because he failed big time. If he can't admit this and apologize to you, I don't see how the two of you can remain married. MDSN Bell says, not the a-hole at all. You are the one in labor. Your comfort and safety are paramount. If his behavior is causing you to panic, you bounce him because that's not good for the baby either. Look, my dad passed out in the delivery room. I was a mum slash baby candy striper for a number of years in high school. Some men just can't handle being in the room while their wife is in pain. There is no judgment for that, as everyone is different. His behavior after the birth is what's concerning. You rightfully tossed him out of the moment, and then he takes off to the point where his own mother doesn't know where he is? Oh, hell no. That is not okay. 
I do like reading these long comments because you get so many different viewpoints and stories that I don't think you'd normally get from posts just reading them. It's sad to see just how bad some people's upbringings are and the people they trust in their lives being such terrible people. It just seems so dangerous to raise your child with a husband like that around. But yeah, I don't know what else there is to say besides I hope that OP gets away from this man. I'm sure therapy can help mitigate the damage, but this seems to be someone that is going to do damage to your child regardless. Am I the a-hole for leaving my stepfather behind in our family vacation? I'm 24 female, currently on a trip with my mother, brother, and stepfather. To shorten the story, I'll go straight to the point. Yesterday, we decided to leave our Airbnb at around 8am because we were taking public transportation to save some money and also had a guide visit at 9.30am at the Edinburgh Castle and according to Google Maps, it would take us around 45 minutes to get there. Everybody got ready in time, except my stepfather Daniel, male 46, who couldn't decide what jacket to wear. That already made us a couple of minutes late, but we wouldn't miss the bus. He then picked out a very big and heavy red jacket. We all asked him multiple times if he was sure because the jacket was a lot to carry around all day, but he was certain. Info. The walking distance from the Airbnb to the bus stop was 10 minutes, we left the house at around 8.10am, and the bus was supposed to arrive at 8.25am. As soon as we arrived at the bus stop, Daniel decided that we were right, and the red jacket was too much, and then went back to change, which made us miss the first bus. My brother and I got a little annoyed, but mum said that we had time. Daniel took 15 minutes to return, then he said that he was going back because the jacket he picked now wasn't warm enough. That made us miss the second bus. He came back wearing the exact same jacket because he didn't get to change it because he got lost and couldn't find the house. It's a suburban area and the houses look very similar. At this point, we were all very irritated, but he went back anyway. The third bus was arriving and my brother and I decided to take it. My mom didn't like it and asked for us to wait. We agreed for her sake, which, guess what? We missed the third bus. Now there was a chance of us being late because it was around 8.45am at this point. Daniel returned and everything seemed fine. We waited for the bus and as it got there and Daniel tried to find his phone, he couldn't. He left it at home. My brother and I had had enough and we wouldn't miss this bus. We went ahead and said that we would be meeting them at the castle. They arrived at 10am and couldn't join the guided tour, but we did lol. Daniel was upset and said that we had the whole day to visit the castle and it wouldn't make a difference at what time we arrived there. Mum supported us but said she talked with Daniel and he'll apologize if we do the same, but I feel like we didn't do anything wrong. But according to him, we're kind of assholes. I don't want to drag this and ruin the vacation, but what do you guys think? Info 2. Some people have commented that he might have a mental issue. The answer is no. Daniel is completely fine. He actually had a brother with mental disability, and when their mother died about a year ago, Daniel took guardianship of him, and he had to take a few tests ordered by a judge to make sure he was able. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I left my stepfather behind during a family vacation, he was making us late, and I didn't want to miss the activity that we planned the day before. He said we could have waited, but we decided not to, and now he's upset with me. Damn Daniel, back at it again with the incompetence and poor time management skills. I would be just as offended and annoyed and angry as you are if I were to be in your shoes for this OP. There's a reason we double and triple check our gear, what we have on us, the weather conditions, everything, before we go out and do something, especially on holidays. I do agree that time is of the essence, and he is wasting everyone else's time. If your mother and Daniel want to go and do their own thing, that's fine, but they need to respect the time of others that are on the trip with them. I think it's silly that he demands an apology from you guys when you've done nothing wrong. I can understand why and if you do give it, but I don't think he deserves one. Because I guess in my point of view, it would diminish the sincerity of his apology. Anyway, I don't see any situation in which you're the asshole here, so not the asshole. For some relevant comments, does he usually try to ruin things? And OP says, it's the first time, we usually get along great. 
Does he have ADHD or another mental illness? I don't know about ADHD. I can suggest to my mum to find him a therapist, but other than ADHD, we're sure he's mentally fine. Garamon7 says, Not the asshole. I didn't know that you could have a baby for a stepfather. And seriously, would they let you do the same if you forgot a phone and couldn't decide what to wear? I suspect the answer is, no, Scott. Must be his first time traveling without his mummy, wink. Oh, he has a new mummy now, and is trying to break her in all in one day. It's not working with the kids, though. Remarkable Topic says, Sounds like unmedicated ADHD, from someone who has ADHD and hates the medication for it, issues. Whatever the reason, though, OP is not the a-hole, and it's unrealistic to expect others to continue to miss buses for their plans due to this type of situation. Ashes and Hale says, Some people are just like this without being neurodivergent. They're just inconsiderate and self-absorbed. That seems to be the case here. I'm there for the mother telling him to think twice about calling her grown kids assholes. That's the kind of attitude Am I the Asshole is often missing. Karen Rachel says, Not the a-hole. Try and enjoy your trip. You are a lot nicer than me. I would have gotten on the second bus, maybe even the first. He's trying to control the situation for some reason. That's a version of weaponized incompetence that he's using to get you all to do what he wants, or maybe just not what you want. Confident Feline replies, Yeah, I would have gone, okay, see you at the castle, the first time he went back. Sounds like he didn't want to go to the castle and was trying to miss enough buses so he could get everyone to do what he wanted instead. I used to do this exact same thing as a kid when I didn't want to go somewhere. Turns out I had crippling anxiety. And now onto the update. Thank you all who gave advice. My mother approached us and said she realized we didn't do anything wrong and apologized. Turns out that this wasn't the first time something like this happened. I won't go into too much detail about what our mum told us, but Daniel is absolutely terrible at time management and is used to people bending to his will. We've dealt with him differently, and he just wasn't expecting that. She sat us down and told him that one, she already raised her kids and doesn't want to raise a husband, two, we wouldn't be apologizing because we didn't do anything wrong unlike him, who was disrespectful to our family, and three, if we establish a time and he couldn't be there, we'll be leaving without him. And lastly, she said to think twice about calling her children assholes. Daniel ended up apologizing and promised that he would work on this issue. To make up, he paid for another tour to the Highlands. We're excited. Thank you all again. In the comments, Cool Caterpillar 77 says, I cannot believe how many buses they missed before finally deciding to get on. I may have missed the first one, although I'm leaning towards no given that he was already having jacket issues at home, but I would have gotten on that second bus no hesitation. Yeah, I'd have skipped the first no problem, especially if he admitted he was wrong about the jacket after all, but the second? No buddy, see you at the castle. Edinburgh ain't that big, you can catch up. Lichinimo says, what an inconsiderate dick. It wouldn't make a difference at what time we arrived there. Except it did. OP and her brother made it on time to make the tour, and they didn't. Like, come on, dude. Adron replies, Yeah, they're in a foreign country for a limited time and obviously want to make the most of it, yet he has the goal to act like they can afford to waste time waiting on his ass when he messes up. If he was more considerate, he would have told them to go ahead anyway, because waiting in a souvenir shop is more fun than the bus stop. Personally, I'm glad that the mother helped iron things over with everyone here. And hey, setting up healthy boundaries with him. Three separate precedents that he needs to follow and understand going forward from this incident. I don't feel like it's too often that you see such healthy relationship management from people like that. And I just want to applaud her for being so forthright with this man for doing wrong, getting him to apologize, and just working things out with her family. That's so healthy. Like Slay. What do you guys think about that one? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next post is by user Wife No More Now, titled, My husband has been cheating for the past decade. I honestly am at a loss for words. I just don't understand why this is happening to me. I'm 30 female, and me and my husband, 30 male, have been married for five years, together for 11. We literally had a movie-like relationship, just a constant honeymoon phase. 
Of course, it got boring here and there, and there were bumps along the road, but I wouldn't have ever thought of this, ever. Yesterday, I was looking up a recipe on Pinterest using my husband's phone when he got a message from a contact called Internet Company, but it was a video, which I thought was weird. So I clicked on it, and within the video, there was a little girl saying Dada and a woman in the background that got super excited. I couldn't believe it. I scrolled up. Tons of texts, all about different things. When he'd be visiting, if he could pick up, which is a girl's name, let's call her Kelly. Kelly today. Daycare for, let's call her Dina. Date nights, all sorts of stuff. I couldn't believe my eyes. I managed to find the woman on Facebook. All it did was really hammer in that this was really happening. I tried to convince myself that those weren't his kids. Maybe he was just cheating on me with someone with kids. Please let him be cheating on me with someone with kids. This woman had two daughters, worked an office job, and posted pictures of her daughters and what she made for dinner every night. I took a breath and messaged her. It was so, so much worse than I could have ever imagined. These two girls were both his, one being 11 months and the other being four years old. I already was panicked at the thought of him cheating on me for four years until I asked how long. Ten effing years. They had been dating for ten years. He kept up a double life for ten years. I don't even want to fathom how. Apparently this woman had no idea. He always claimed that he had to live away from her for work. He visited every weekend, which FYI, I work 16 hour shifts on the weekend and return during the afternoon and go straight to bed. She showed me countless videos and images of them together. I just couldn't believe it. How could he do this to me? Why would he do this to me? We have been trying for a kid for four months. I was so excited to go through this experience together, but that's wrong. It wouldn't have been together. I'm so glad I am not pregnant. I can't imagine living this lie while pregnant. I just can't look past this. I feel like such an idiot. How could I not tell? Why wasn't I concerned about never seeing him on the weekends? Why didn't I wonder why he took such frequent business trips? Why didn't I question why he was getting so many texts from an internet company? Why, 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 why? Why did he waste my time like this? Why did he hurt me like this? Why the hell did he do this? I don't even know how to confront him. I can't sleep. I can't even be around someone like that. Someone who could do this to me. I'm so heartbroken. I can't ignore it. My life is a lie. My life is ruined. I don't know how to even try to move on. In the comments, Darkhaven Witch says, What did the other woman say? Was she apologetic? Was she horrified? Is she going to stay with him? Save the evidence. Send it to yourself to help with your divorce. Get your ducks in a row. Before you confront him, have it in an email addressed to his family and friends. Hit send after you do it, but don't tell him what you are going to do. OP replies, She was mortified. She didn't even believe me until I had her videos from our wedding. She didn't apologize for anything, but I didn't expect her to. But she did ask a lot of questions and answered all of mine. Reddit said it Reddit replies, I know some people like to take what they consider the high road, but he has scammed you for years. Your time, your feelings, finances, everything imaginable. I really do hate when people just leave quietly, letting the other person get away with it. For the love of God, rinse him for all he is worth. Hole up a minute says, You're not an idiot for having a husband with a secret life. That is not on you. You would be an idiot to look past it or find a solution to stay together. There is zero way you can justify or forgive this. Don't be an effing idiot. Get a lawyer and look for your way out. Is this woman also heartbroken? Shocked? Angry? Sad? Confused? Is she defending him, being possessive? Or is she also furious with him? If she also seems against him, she may be a great ally. You could both benefit greatly by teaming up to divorce and get custody and child support. He doesn't deserve anything, not even his kids, who he lives away from because he'd rather his wife not know. OP replies, She just seemed shocked overall. 
I wouldn't say she had any undertones of a single emotion besides surprise and maybe sadness. She agreed to not talk to him until I did, which I am so grateful for. Hole up a minute replies, that's a good sign. I hope the both of you come out of this all right. This isn't fair to either of you. You both deserve better. Just remember that none of this is your fault and you deciding to not be around him anymore is the best decision that you can make for yourself. Again, I'm gonna be saying this a lot in my videos. What do I say here? I didn't think that double lives like these were possible in this day and age. I can understand back before the rise of the internet when you had pilots that would fly east to west coast in like America. Yeah, they could easily maintain two families on opposite sides of the countries and keep that anonymity going, but how did this man manage that? Like absolutely, yes, it's disgusting and morally reprehensible, but the fact that it seems like these two people are living within close proximity and he managed to keep all of this under wraps. That's a dangerous and tactful man. I'd be kind of scared of him, TBH. This is next level deceit and danger. Oh my god. And now, on to the update. This is an update slash extra info. I've gotten into contact with a divorce attorney. I'm obviously going to divorce him. To all the people saying we should just be sister wives? <laughs> you sick freaks. Why would you say that to someone? Pretty small update, but I wanted everyone to also know a bunch of info because the same questions keep getting asked. So here's the actual update. I haven't confronted him after dozens of comments advising me not to. Me and the other girl, I'll give her a fake name now I guess, so let's call her Jenny. No, her name is not Jennifer. Have been talking. She has agreed to not confront him only because we are married. I did in fact learn that my husband was supporting this other family of his, and apparently Jenny makes a very low paycheck, so she was and is financially dependent on him. Me and Jenny also got two sides of my husband. Me and my husband's life was eerily good? I guess you could say never had any huge arguments. In fact, we rarely argued ever, and if we did, it was usually about me wanting him to get a different job, because I was led to believe he was only making 31k a year, which is super low for his occupation. We had an amazing, intimate life. All the normal couple bases. But apparently, he wasn't so nice to Jenny. He was far more distant, literally also, yelled at her all the time, treated her like trash, only for him to bring her amazing gifts and take her out on amazing date nights and tell her how much he loved her the next week. What the hell? But that's not it. He loves his daughters oh so much, even though he's screwing over their mom and acts like such a good father. That makes me mad, like super mad. I can't even fathom why. He's not 100% trash. Should I be happy? But I'm not. I am so mad at him. It's eating away at me that I can't just scream at him about how horrible he is. Now, here's a whole bunch of info to answer a bunch of questions. How didn't you notice money missing? Well, our finances were kept separate. We also got a prenup when we were married. How did he keep up visitation during COVID? Apparently, he didn't. Jenny said that he mostly only called and FaceTimed. If she dare brought it up, he would just hang up on her. Real good guy, I know. Why were you on his phone? Gasp! Could it be? My phone was almost dead, so I used his? Yes, I noticed he had calls from her, but she was saved as internet company, so I paid little mind. Oh, and funny thing is, I'm saved as spam call on his phone, which, fun fact, was a joke between us because I used to call him five times every day during our early 20s. People used to literally call me spammy. I occasionally got mad at him because how would he know if it was spam or not? I'm pretty effing mad that I didn't get weirded out faster. How didn't you figure out via social media, and how did you find her? I usually only use Facebook to look at stupid memes and to talk to friends. Two, I had her phone number. That's how. Why didn't you text her instead of messaging her? I got this one as a private message, but I talked to her on Facebook because I didn't want him to see my number on her phone somehow. I know, paranoid and whatever. Why don't you just convert and be sister wives? Why? Why would I do that? How didn't you notice? Why did you get married so young? I don't know. 
Maybe I trusted my partner of 11 years? We got married quote-unquote young because he wanted to and we could. How could he have the energy to keep up a double life? I'm not him, I don't know. Honestly, it's beyond me why he would be with me and her at the same time. It makes more sense for him to have been with her full time than me. What about family? Well, he told Jenny that he cut his family off years ago. He didn't, and Jenny grew up in foster care and was never adopted. The funny thing is, his family probably won't care that he cheated on me. They will only care that they were dare kept away from their grandbabies. In the comments, just passing through 63 says, possibly that the other relationship started as an affair. He had no intention of it carrying on this long, but she got pregnant and here we are. A child, now children, was involved and he stuck around. That could be why he's not nice to her. He never intended for her to still be around and he, at least subconsciously, knows his house of cards could come tumbling down at any time and he blames her somehow. But that's just a theory. A Reddit theory. And cut. OP, when do you plan to confront him? Have you gotten any advice from your attorney on how exactly to do that? I worry that this could be a very volatile confrontation. I also got the sense that the reason he's cruel to Jenny is because he messed up fooling around and now has to pay for the consequences. And since she has two kids, he can't leave her or she'll take him to court, which could out him to his legal wife. Yet he treats his legal wife with such care and has a honeymoon-like bliss, but takes out all his frustration on Jenny. Rawbeard X says, It makes sense that the marriage was a permanent quasi-honeymoon. You were the honeymoon wife away from the breeding wife. So chances are he has a third wife lined up to honeymoon with if you started to try for a kid. Ah, this guy. I don't understand this male mentality. Do men genuinely change the way they see their wives as soon as they have children? Like, in what imaginary world are men living in to decide if they are husband or bachelor? This is a mental illness level of delusion. Raw Beard replies, Not married, so can only say what I have observed in other men. Yes, some do change, or maybe reveal how they actually view their wives. And now, onto the final update. Hello everyone, I am back. I've moved out of our house, I'm staying with a friend, we're getting divorced. I confronted him with said friend, just simply because you never know what can happen, but at least I got some form of closure from this. First off, he wasn't sorry at all, he didn't even ask me to stay, he just huffed and said, okay, if this is what you want. When I asked him why, he just looked up at me, didn't say a word. I asked him how, how could he keep this up for so long? And what did he say? Ah, oh, because you both went along with it. So of course, I asked further. And as many of you guessed, Jenny knew. For some odd reason, she was okay with this? I still don't understand why she would lie to me instead of just, I don't know, blocking me or something? I'll admit I was upset. Very upset and confused. So I asked again, why would you do this? He told me that he was cheating on me with her since the beginning of our dating, that she was just a fling though, and he didn't expect either relationship to really last. But it did. Woohoo! When I asked him why to cheat in the first place, he said, because I was young, I could get away with it at that time, so why not? He effing disgusts me. I asked him why he married me instead of her, and he said, because you were the better choice. When I asked him to elaborate, he definitely elaborated. Jenny didn't have a good job, so she was a bad investment. Ew. Jenny was uglier. Once again, ew. Jenny wasn't as good as me. She wasn't as clean as me. She wouldn't be as good of a partner as me, and so on. I asked why he would even have sex with her if he liked me better. Well, that's because she was more kinky. For your information, I am not kinky at all. I'm very vanilla, in fact. I asked about the kids, of course. He clarified that the first kid was an accident. He literally did the air quotes. Jenny poked holes in a condom, which he found out about but never confronted her. Of course, I don't know if I can trust this. He had a second one with her because, in his mind, he could handle one, so why not two? 
What type of dumb effery is that? When I asked about how he treated Jenny, he confirmed that he did in fact only see her on weekends, but claimed to have never treated her poorly. He said he treated her as the mother of his children and respected her as such, but never treated her as a romantic partner. Apparently, she's only there to screw, not to love. At the end of it all, he asked if he could talk to me privately. I couldn't find a reason not to, so I sent my friend out of the room. He told me that he still loved me and that we could work this out if I really wanted to, that he would abandon Jenny and his daughters but still pay child support. I said no, to which he let out the most dramatic sigh I'd ever heard in my life, before saying, have it your way then, and then wearing the most smug smile I have ever seen, like he'd won the biggest battle of all time. This guy is insane, what, what is going on? Who acts like this? Is that sociopathic? That's not even psychopathic, this is just a man without a brain. I was left conflicted. I cried in my friend's car all the way to his house. It's like my now ex could just change everything with a flick of a switch. I can feel myself already wanting him back, gross, but I'm not going back. I'm never going back. I've got a lawyer, and so does he, the papers are signed, all that is left is court. I can't believe how much my life has changed this year. I went from being giddy to go home to see my husband smile, to dreading it, hating it, wishing I'd never see it again. I don't know whether Jenny really knew, but I'm guessing she did. I mean, how did she not know for 10 years? But that being said, how didn't I know for 10 years? Whatever, I just wanted to let Reddit know that this is what's happened. This didn't happen recently, but I forgot about the whole Reddit post. I've got other things to worry about if you didn't notice. <laughs> I don't know what to trust. I don't even want to reach out to Jenny. I don't even want to know the truth anymore. You know, Matthew, if you manage to see this, honestly, I applaud you. Congrats, you did it. You ruined everything. You got away with it for over a decade and it's finally over. I wonder if you'll go back to Jenny or just find some other girl to trick, to destroy. All I care is that you leave me out of it. I'm looking forward to moving on and finding someone who actually loves me. Tss, ah, damn. In the comments, Darkhaven Witch says, I'm so sorry. He is now strapped to these kids for at least the next 18 years, and hopefully, Jenny will end things and demand child support. Sadly, one day his daughters will realize how creepy and hateful their father is and be ashamed that he is their sperm donor. You can't just treat people like this and not have it returned to you. He did both of you wrong, knowingly and willingly, and was laughing about it because he got away with it. But he is one of those used, ignorant spirits put here to cause pain. He has no worth, no purpose, no one will ever truly love him, and he will never find peace. When he eventually passes on into the next life, no one will even notice his absence. Again, I'm baffled at the fact that he thought he won, and it's like some weird movie villain arc going on with this man right now. You just know straight after that interaction, he went and posted an edgy Joker meme on his goddamn Facebook timeline. Be careful who you trust. The devil was once an angel. My silence is not a weakness, but the beginning of my revenge. He really thought he did something with that speech. I, I don't know what he thought he won. She's not going to come crawling back to you in six months, buddy. It's just the, he's just said the most reprehensible things. What a terrible human. I mean, congrats to OP for escaping and getting out of there, but that's, that's 10 years of your life you're not going to get back that this man just destroyed. Yes, it's not too late to move on, but my god, he's so smart yet so dumb at the same time. I'm surprised someone like this can exist. I, I feel terrible for OP at the same time. I, I really hope that you find someone better because Jesus Christ. Posted by user Throw RA Pulsive titled My 40 female husband, 38 male, separated, wants me to terminate my baby with my one night stand, 40 male, and everyone seems to agree with him. My husband and I tried to get pregnant since we got married 14 years ago to no avail. When I started nearing 40, I told him that I'll be frank with him. I feel too old and too tired to try more. Maybe we should be enough. This was two years ago. I felt like something died in him after I told him that, and things went south. 
December last year, he asked for separation. He said he loved me but wasn't happy. I was broken. We both were, but that's just life sometimes. Anyway, I thought he just wanted a break, but not a week later, I heard that he slept with a mutual friend of ours. I was heartbroken, and I called him crying and yelling. He said that we were separated. What do you think separated means? I cried and yelled some more, and I hung up. He texted me the next day asking how I was feeling. He never meant to hurt me, it just happened, blah blah blah. I didn't answer him. I took a week sick, and only my closest colleagues knew what happened because they needed to cover my work. At the Christmas party, a colleague approached me and told me that he was sorry to hear the news from my closest colleagues. I ended up telling him everything, and he ended up taking me home to his apartment. It was that one time. I felt embarrassed around him at work and told him that it was just that time, and he said he was sorry to hear that because he thought I was awesome. Now I'm pregnant, and it's his, because I haven't had sex in several months before that. My first instinct is, I'm keeping her. I don't know why it feels like a her. I just didn't know what to do. I told my mum who was angry and told me that this won't end well. She told my husband and he showed up at my door within an hour saying, so you're getting rid of it, right? No? He started crying asking how I could do this to him, begging me to take him back. We love each other and we are meant to be together. I was right. We are enough, just the two of us, or maybe we can get blessed with our own baby. What do you mean no? Didn't you tell me you were getting old and you were tired of trying and you wanted us to be enough for each other? I don't know what he means by that. I didn't plan any of this. Nobody is listening to me and everybody thinks I'm going crazy keeping a child from a one night stand. I contacted my colleague and I told him that I was pregnant. I told him that I was contemplating keeping her and apologized to him. I told him I wasn't expecting anything from him, and if he wanted me to terminate, he should tell me now, because I wanted to hear everyone's opinion before making up my mind. We ended up sleeping together in his office, and now we have been together every day in one way or another. He said he wanted to be in her life and raise her with me, even if we didn't end up together. I told this to my parents, but now they're not speaking to me. No one is, really. And things are awkward at work. People are whispering behind my back, and I just don't know what to do. I'm very distraught. Honestly, in my head, I just keep going, keep it. Just keep it. Who cares what they're all saying? Keep the baby. You're 40 years old. I feel like the clock is well and truly ticking at this point. There is no bad blood between you and this person you've had a one-night stand with. If anything, the relationship is flourishing. Your husband was jealous that he was never able to do that for you, quite understandably, but I feel like that is no reason to ask for an abortion and to ruin that for you. It's truly heartless behavior for him to have your words turned back on you and said, oh, you know what, maybe we are just enough for each other. Maybe if OP was enough, he wouldn't have separated and went and slept with someone else? It's just such a mess, and I completely disagree with everyone who is disagreeing with OP on this one. Let a woman live her life and have her child in peace, my god. In the comments, Sharper View says, You separated for valid reasons. Those were not resolved. There is no guarantee if you terminate, they will be fixed. Now you are pregnant, which is something you couldn't do with your husband. It's likely that if you get an abortion and get back together, it will end. He will be mad that you two couldn't have a baby together. You will be mad that you gave up your chance for motherhood. Your marriage will end and you will not have a baby. Dev246 replies, Exactly. He clearly only cares about himself. Nothing good will come of them getting back together. He doesn't deserve OP. It sucks that some people in her life have turned on her, but they kinda sound like assholes anyway. On the bright side, OP will be so distracted by all the good things going on in her life, she probably won't notice them gone. Don't light yourself on fire to keep others warm. Don't make this decision for others' benefit, OP. Give yourself a chance at happiness. Now I wonder if they ever even consulted doctors about the fertility issues, and this was actually on him and not her, and he simply refused to ever get tested for it, because what are the damn odds she gets pregnant the first time while it didn't work for 14 years? So it compounds the theory that he's infertile and having some ego issues related to that. Uni says... I think what hurts your husband more is that you moved on, and it's now very clear he was the reason you were unable to conceive. He said he wasn't happy and essentially left you. 
If you terminate and try to repair your marriage, he still won't be happy and will probably not be able to move past this. Your marriage was over when he slept with someone else a week after getting separated. Don't let him blame you for it. Talk to a lawyer and ensure your financial security. Tread carefully with this new guy and just take it slow. He seems like a great partner to have in parenthood. Let everything else evolve naturally. Also, make sure you're seeing a therapist to help you process all of these changes. The end of a 14-year marriage is bound to prompt some feelings that will only get more intense with hormones. If people are mad, let them be mad. This is your life, and you are not the warden of other people's emotions. At the end of the day, this will be your decision, and everyone else will have to deal with it. I think you'll be a great mum, and before you know it, all the negative noise will disappear more and more as this life grows inside of you. And now, on to the update. Hi, sorry for being offline for so long. I've just been so busy and so tired and sick all the time. I want to tell you that I have now filed for divorce from my husband. When he got the papers, believe it or not, he kicked me out of our home, so now I rent a small attic room at one of my senior co-workers. She and her husband live alone, and they are very tidy and clean. I love that she did this for me because she doesn't rent out rooms otherwise, but she simply just felt sorry for me. My family shut the door in my face. Initially, I thought that they were just disappointed that my marriage was over because they loved my husband like a son, but now I don't know if I can make any more excuses for them. They know I have been kicked out of my home and that I have spent some weeks sleeping on my friend's couches until I found this room that I can call mine, yet no one felt that now it was time to reach out a helping hand. I'm now looking for my own place to buy. These things take time in my country. I've learned a hard lesson, that everything can turn on its head in a matter of weeks and you become homeless and the people you thought were your safety nets, well, they're just cobwebs. One night stand and I are still dating and I think we are falling hard for each other. He thought I was unnecessarily stubborn not to have moved in with him when I got kicked out like garbage, but how could I? If we are ever to succeed as a couple, I need to be with him from a place of equality. Only then we could know if this is love, pure love, and not dependence and convenience. He thinks I'm crazy thinking like that, but he respected my wish. My husband is refusing to sign the divorce. He has sent me four emails. I read one line from his first email, how did we end up like this? And I stopped reading after that. I asked my lawyer to send him an email that moving forward, the only means of communicating with me is via my lawyer and her email. He still sent one more email. This has maybe not been a very cheerful update, but please don't worry about me. I feel happy and free and just so excited for my next chapter as a mother and hopefully with my one night stand by my side. I love him. In the comments, Limp Outcome says, you're soon to be ex. Oh my gosh, how did we end up like this? Seriously, what? My question would have been, and how is my ex-friend you screwed? Either he's not right in the head, or just hit him what his affair cost. Years of love and marriage down the drain. I wish you all the best and lots of love. I'm so excited about your new journey as a mother. Way to go, OP. And OP replies, he regrets kicking me out and is wanting me to move back home now and he moves out and we try separation for a while. Also, he is willing to take in my baby. Huh, how generous of him. What he doesn't understand is that the mere thought of him makes me sick. I feel like a fool, not truly seeing his true colors before now, or maybe I chose not to see them. He, of course, was a great husband when everything was great and we had no issues, but did I know that he would turn into this monster he became within the first sign of hardship? I think I did. Limp Outcome responds, he wants to try separation again? Isn't that what caused all the problems in the first place? You just brought up an excellent point though. How do we know if anyone we spent years with is going to turn into a monster or cheat? Is the late 30s, early 40s some ticking time bomb for men? My husband used to counsel couples years ago, and his thoughts were the husband wanted the break so he could sleep around, very likely with the mutual friend. He wanted to know though, did your husband try to hide his cheating, or did all your mutual friends know? Either way, sleeping with a mutual friend, according to my husband, is a marriage ender. And unless you still really, really loved him, which doesn't sound like it, it's going to take a lot of work. 
perhaps years to fix. And it sounds like you have someone, your one night stand, who really loves you and is the father of your child. My husband felt that your soon-to-be ex, for whatever reason, never considered that his cheating was a marriage ender and likely thought that you wouldn't leave him over this. In other words, a typical cheater. He is much more disgusted with your family. OP responds, He wants us to get back together, but since I refused, he said we should stay separated but not file for divorce because I need time to think. Because according to him, I'm not thinking straight. I'm not in love with my husband anymore. Limp Outcome replies, Well, why should you be thinking straight? He blew up your life, your marriage, and your relationship with your family. He slept with a mutual friend. I would suggest that he wasn't thinking straight. And the reason my husband wondered if he was all out in the open about sleeping with your mutual friend or tried to hide it is because being all out in the open would suggest that he was angry at you and he wanted you to know. It would be something else if he tried to hide the affair. And OP replies, I wasn't supposed to know that he slept with her. He knew he messed up, but continued to be defiant about us being on a break, so what difference was it if he slept with a friend or not? But yeah, he knew he messed up. Limp Outcome replies, Cheetah logic. I'll sleep with our mutual friend and no one will ever know. Ugh. Well, this supported my husband's theory. It wasn't something that just happened, but your husband never expected this to end your marriage. My husband no longer meets with couples. Too frustrating. He said if a husband or wife who cheats could just stop before the action and think, what is the end game here? If they could just think ahead to, what happens when I'm found out? My partner devastated and a divorce. OP, I wish you all the love and joy in the world. I'm honestly in the same boat here. I find it so disgusting that the family still won't take OP back, but I'd like to know more about why that is. Seems like there's a little bit of tomfoolery from uh, the soon-to-be ex going on in the background. Seems like some communication errors between the two here because uh, being on a break doesn't mean that you're broken up. I genuinely believe the soon-to-be ex didn't expect this to end the marriage. That's the only way I can justify his actions after all of this. Anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think down below. What's your take on this situation? Unexposed post is titled... Am I the a-hole for not defending my husband? My husband, 31 male, and I, 30 female, have been married for three years. About four months ago, we found out that I was pregnant with our first child. We were overjoyed and told most of our family about it early on. My husband didn't want to reveal it to our friends yet, and so I didn't. It was incredibly hard for me, especially because I couldn't tell JJ, 30 female. JJ and I have been best friends since we were 14. I love her to death, and we tell each other every single thing, but I decided to respect my husband's wishes this time. JJ also moved three hours away from us earlier this year, so she doesn't visit as much either. Naturally, over the past month, more and more of our friends have gotten to know about it, but I couldn't find the right time to tell JJ, and my husband didn't insist much either. Yesterday, JJ visited us, and I revealed the pregnancy through a small box that said, You're an auntie now, with a baby onesie. Now, JJ's a little goofy, which is what I love the most about her. She doesn't care what others think, and is just a very entertaining person in general. When she saw the text, she immediately started screaming, and then cried and hugged me. It was a very emotional moment for the both of us. My husband seemed pretty happy about it too, although he has been known to not adore JJ's amusing behavior sometimes. She's a huge jokester and loves roasting him. After the reveal, she gave him a huge hug and then a pat on the back and said, Damn Mike, didn't know you could do that. This was clearly a joke and everyone in the room let out a laugh. My husband was not very happy. He responded with, you know, this is why you were the last one to know about this, in a very passive, aggressive tone. JJ was taken aback and confused. She asked me if that was true, and when I responded with an explanation, she said she was kinda hurt, but was happy for us. The excitement died down in the room after that, and everybody left soon after. I got really mad at my husband for saying that to JJ, but he says that he's tired of her cracking jokes and not taking things seriously. And most of all, he hates that I never take his side. Knowing JJ, she's really just kidding most of the time, and I don't think that there is anything to be that offended over. My husband thinks I'm being an asshole here by not defending him. 
What do y'all think? Am I the asshole? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I didn't defend my husband when he got offended over a silly joke that my best friend cracked. I might be the asshole for not taking his side. I'm on the husband's side for this one, it doesn't seem like you were listening to him and his feelings. If he's telling you that you never take his side, it probably means that you're not. Like, what else do you want me to think? Like, I don't know, wake up? Not much else to say besides that, I do think you're the asshole in this situation. In the comments, Bria Rose 1021 says, quote, She's a huge jokester and loves roasting him. And I'm assuming that your husband has expressed his displeasure at this behavior in the past. It doesn't matter if JJ likes roasting him, if he doesn't also like it, and he clearly doesn't, then it isn't roasting, it's bullying. And, like many who have been bullied continuously, he had finally had enough and clapped back. Was it mean? Yes, but so was her bullying. If you don't have the awareness to see how her bullying affects your husband, that's a you problem, and you don't get to blame him when he stands up for himself. You're the asshole, and you need to talk to JJ about her bullying your husband. After you have a serious look at how you've helped enable that behavior for years, and apologize to your husband about it. Unfortunate Daring replies, Yup, you hit the nail on the head. When you need to explain someone as a huge jokester, and you just can't take a joke, that's not joking, that's bullying. Her friend is a bully, and she does nothing to stop it. She just keeps trying to find ways to excuse it, and doesn't take her husband's side. Definitely, you're the asshole. It's interesting that when I first read this, it sounded like a joke that my guy friends would say to one another. However, reading it a second time, I realized there is one serious guy in our group that I would not say this to, nor would anyone else. Roasting, quote unquote, is about knowing the person being roasted, having a good relationship with them so they are in on the joke. JJ is the mean girl bullying your husband in this three person friend group. Yup. It's only a joke if both people are laughing. Making fun of a serious friend can cause serious hurt. You're the asshole, OP. You won't tell your friend to leave your husband alone because he doesn't like the way she talks to him and that it hurts his feelings. But you will tell him off for, checks notes, having feelings? What on earth are you thinking? Also, JJ sounds exhausting. Continually making fun of someone, in public no less, who isn't enjoying the joke, particularly if it's done to get laughs from others, is bullying. Your friend is bullying your husband and you're blaming him for not laughing. At the insult a bully is directing at him. Get a clue before he gets a divorce. And now on to the update. So, Soon after I made the original post, I was flooded with lots of comments and judgments, and I genuinely really appreciate them. I'm someone who really believes in self-improvement, so any sort of help in that regard is greatly appreciated. I'll start by admitting that this entire thing was definitely a massive mistake on my part. I didn't communicate well with neither my husband nor my best friend, which resulted in the conflict. I had an extensive, emotional discussion with my husband about how we are doing, the pregnancy has affected our relationship, and we haven't properly addressed that before. Mike told me that while he appreciates JJ and her caring nature, he's not a fan of her jokes in general, and has tried to communicate that with me. While her jokes are rarely about him, he feels like she takes it too far sometimes. I apologize for not understanding his feelings, and not addressing his concerns before. I feel like a horrible partner, but we've agreed to go to couples counseling to address our communication issues. JJ and I met up, and I told her that Mike has never liked her jokes, and that she needs to read the room. We also discussed my pregnancy, and she said that her joke was never meant to be that deep, or be directed at Mike's fertility, or anything. She was sorry that she had offended Mike, and that he felt like she was targeting him, because that was never her intention. She also said that she felt kinda hurt, only because, as my best friend, she thought that she'd be one of the first people to know but she was really happy for us, and thought that Mike was a great guy and didn't want to create any problems for us. She has some childhood trauma that she slides off using her carefree persona. So I invited JJ over to our house, and Mike and JJ had a heart-to-heart, -heart, honest conversation. JJ apologized to him for making unnecessary jokes and for not realizing that he didn't like them. Mike told her that he could have communicated that with her better instead of saying whatever he said. 
JJ also agreed to maintain her distance from us, which was a tough decision to make, but we all agreed that it would be the best for everyone. We only hit a sour spot when Mike told JJ that she had to start taking her life more seriously and focus on finding a boyfriend and getting a real job. JJ respectfully told him this was none of anybody else's business, and she liked her carefree life. We ate ice cream together and then bid JJ goodbye. I'm not sure when I'll see her again, but for now I'll be focusing on my husband and our baby. I was the asshole here, and I take full responsibility for my actions and will be working towards fixing that. Thanks and have a good day. In the comments, Duchess Ravenclaw 52 says, I don't think I like anyone in this story. Yeah, I'm kinda there too. I mean, I respect the OP for the self-reflection and trying to be better, but other than that... She self-reflected, but came to some interesting conclusions. Like, why is JJ distancing herself better for all of them? Right? I don't get it. OP says they had a kumbaya moment, husband made an unnecessary remark, and they sealed the peace with ice cream. It was love all around, but JJ can't come around often? There's an awful lot of details about JJ that OP left out. And Mike too. What I'm getting out of this is that Mike hates JJ and wants her completely gone from their lives. Something's missing here, and something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Because she makes jokes, and she's single, has no kids, and her job is not respectable. She's obviously a bad influence on his wife. To be fair, OP's description of her husband and JJ's relationship is inconsistent. In the first post, she says that JJ loves roasting him, then in the second says he's rarely the target of her jokes. These two statements are not necessarily irreconcilable, but they don't gel well together. If you're constantly making someone the butt of your jokes and they don't like it, then you're just a bully. Sounds like JJ doesn't know when to keep her mouth shut and husband needs to pull the misogynistic stick out of his ass. I feel like OP was massively trying to downplay JJ's jokes in the second post after they were both called out. Boomshroom replies, Don't get me wrong, the husband clearly has an axe to grind with JJ not conforming to his ideas of gender roles, and this may go some way to understanding why he maybe likes her joke even less, but that being said, if she's been making jokes about him for years, and OP just ignores it whenever he complains, it's not a surprise that he doesn't like her. It's always good looking at these comments because it kind of points out logical inconsistencies that I guess I never would see just reading the story at face value. To me, it definitely seems like OP left so many details out of this post and their <laughs> reconciliation because why would she not come over as often after that? She is your best friend after all. Why do you need to put distance between you guys? You didn't give a solid reason as to why that is. All I can like, speculate is that she makes jokes, she's single, she's got no kids, her job isn't respectable. If I recall correctly, she lives a few hours away, that could be the case. But if that's not the case, that's kind of yikes thinking about. I wish these people all the best. Posted by user Twin Bridesmaid, titled, Am I the a-hole for pulling out of my sister's wedding due to her in-laws? For background, Stella and I are identical twins, 29 female, and we will both be 30 when her wedding comes around this fall. I had her as my maid of honor 8 years ago, and she promised me that I could be hers when her wedding came around. I have 2 kids, 6 female and 3 female. They're the flower girls. My marriage fell apart just over 2 years ago due to a stillbirth and my husband's infidelity. My parents and sister were the only reason I didn't drown from the stress, loneliness, and total abandonment of my spouse. I was a total mess. I went to therapy, got diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression, quit drinking, and I owe a lot of it to my amazing sister. She's the reason why I kept chasing down my ex for child support when he stopped suddenly paying. He suddenly switched from world's best dad to deadbeat dumbass so quickly that my ex-mother-in-law is also disgusted with him. Stella and John, 35 male, engaged last year. His parents are paying about 60% of the wedding. Our parents are paying 30%, Stella and John are paying for the rest themselves. The biggest caveat is that they must be married in John's family's church, full mass with communion. The family is on board because this is going to be a very big wedding. Tonight, Stella had invited me to dinner, as they had finally reserved a date for the church and reception, assuming it was to formally ask me to be her maid of honor. 
I was excited since I haven't been at a wedding party aside from my own wedding. John was with her. Weird because Stella didn't mention him coming at all in our texts about the dinner. We hugged like usual, but John didn't. Weirder. After we got our drinks, they got to it. In a nutshell, John expressed the following. Despite my best efforts to keep it secret, my parents found out that you're divorced when they asked why your husband wasn't coming. They are no longer comfortable with you as maid of honor because it won't look good to the church if my family hears about the divorce. You can be a bridesmaid, but can't mention the divorce or your conditions at all during the wedding events. I was stunned, and I felt tears in my eyes. Stella started crying too, and she tried to spin it in a good way. This is way less stressful for you, so it's a good thing. Mother-in-law has already approved my BFF as my maid of honor, so please don't make this any harder. That's what she said. I knew that I couldn't possibly stay there through an entire meal. I had to process this new information alone. I didn't speak, I just paid for my wickedly expensive cocktail and left to order an Uber home. A few hours ago, I texted Stella that I would not be in her wedding party at all. That was my decision. I wouldn't pull my daughters out, but I would only attend as a guest. She wouldn't take this as an answer, so I had to temp block her due to her excessive texts and calls. I sent my parents a summary of what happened and promised to call them when I was in a better shape tomorrow. Stella thinks that this is a total overreaction. I don't even want to know what John thinks at this point. Please help me. Am I the a-hole? I'm going not the a-hole for this one personally. I think that their reasoning is a complete cop-out. I absolutely despise the fact that they're going along with what the mother-in-law wants for their own wedding, despite it being their own wedding. How about these two stop hiding behind the excuse of, oh, it's the mother-in-law, what she says goes, and just say, we don't want you there as maid of honor. Grow a spine and say this from the start of the wedding planning. This isn't something that just comes up like that. It's honestly disgusting to me. If these two getting married had any semblance of a spine, they would have backed up their sister from the get-go and not kowtowed to this goddamn mother-in-law. But no, let's not rock the boat. Let's screw over someone that doesn't deserve to be screwed over and that we promised this ages ago. I'm sure they'll trust us afterwards. Also, let's get mad at them when they decide not to be a part of the wedding party because doubling down is fun. Not the asshole OP. I hate these people. I hate them so much. In the comments, snarking in the USA says, not the asshole. Honestly, I wouldn't let the kids be in this wedding either. They don't need to be subjected to the in-laws high and mighty attitude. Yep, I would pull the kids out of the wedding and tell her that you don't want her or her in-laws to make your children feel the way she has made you feel. Lemony Slush says, this so much. As painful as it is, please don't allow your innocent kids to be props for Stella's in-laws. Their religion and conservatism does not take precedence over your and your kids' health and well-being. Hang in there. Snoo says, The mention of mass seems to indicate it's Catholic, and the church dogma doesn't give a rat's ass about the marital standing of anyone other than the bride and groom. This is all on sisters' bigoted in-laws. Also, I thought the husband cheating would absolve the wife of any guilt in a divorce. I'm not Catholic, but Lutheran, so maybe it's one of those nuanced things in my denomination. Mother Bike says, not the a-hole. I'm appalled that your sister is even going through with this. Like, mother-in-law approved BFF to be maid of honor. What the hell? Good thing you noped out of it, because I have a funny feeling you won't be the only one if mother-in-law is the one controlling this from behind the scenes. K.S. Nitta says, exactly. What else is your twin's mother-in-law going to do? Select the names of her kids? Decorate their home? So many red flags. Goodness forbid the twin ever gets or has to get a divorce. She'll either be alone, because it's all her fault and X doesn't have to do shit, or she will be kept from the kids because can't have such a sinner in our precious grandchildren's lives. That is, if she's allowed to get a divorce, because good Christian couples stay together, and the good Christian housewife turns a blind eye to her good Christian husband's side pieces. Yikes. Back up to the post, we have an edit. Thank you for all the responses. I half expected to be told to just put up with it and be a plain bridesmaid, which, while difficult, I kind of would have forced myself to just make to make Stella happy. I was just so blindsided, and I feel like I've been gut-punched, and I do need to be told if I'm overreacting in a big way sometimes. I'm going to fall asleep now while binging friends, and wonder if my twin has suddenly become an Ursula instead of Phoebe. 
added too, Wow, I did not expect this to blow up. I can't thank everyone enough for their inputs. I have a call scheduled with my parents this afternoon. From what I gathered, they're extremely upset with Stella and John at the moment, and depending on how that goes, I will talk to my girls about doing something big and fun instead. The more I think about it, sitting through a mass sounds less and less appealing. I'm not even religious. And I saw this query in the comments, Yes, I had a cocktail with no alcohol. I use the word mocktail, but I guess its meaning is still lost to some people. When I asked for a list of mocktails last night, the server was a little condescending about it and said they're still called cocktails if they're not alcoholic. And now, on to the update. This is going to be a brief update. John found the post as he lurks on Reddit and shared it with Stella. I wish I used the fake name Ursula since she joked about that detail herself. Stella Ursula has officially called off the wedding. When John was ranting about the post and how bad the comments were painting him, he said that, Your sister must be off her effing meds and going manic. You better get her ass under control. But then Stella Ursula actually came undone on him and began calling out everything that John and his family had put her through. Then she took off the ring and chucked it across the living room. John went into a rage, and while he didn't do anything but yell at her, he threatened her in regards to her mobility issues. Stella Ursula uses a cane to walk. This was what triggered her to text our parents and myself. By the time our parents made it to the house, John was gone, and she had packed up her bags and left with them. Her cane was not in the house. Stella Ursula wanted to thank you for all the comments calling her out. It shattered the mosaic that John built up around them, and while we're both still raw and processing the last couple of days, I'm glad to have my sister again. She was someone else I hardly recognized a few days ago. As kids, I was more outgoing and she was more reserved, so I felt obliged to go along with her to the other night, despite how conflicted I felt. But again, Stella Ursula says thanks for the wake-up call. And John, if you see this, F you. And you know what? F you too, Keith. In the comments, Neither Water says, He took away her cane? Which of words replies, Abusers will often target and take advantage of disabilities to enforce their control. OP's sister really dodged a bullet. This. Unfortunately, domestic abuse is more common when the victim is disabled. Cynical Mage says, What kind of soulless family does Keith come from that a woman left divorced due to a stillbirth and the husband cheating is someone to be ashamed of rather than a victim of tragedy? Yeah, Keith, F you. The kind that takes walking canes from people with mobility issues, apparently. It's just one line. The cane was not in the house, but screw me, that tells a lot about that asshole Keith. F you, man. As always, the people who need some imaginary sky daddy to force them to be a decent person are inherently bad people. Decent people don't need to be forced to be decent. The Burger Bites Back says, I try not to judge people based on religion, but I'm always wary because I've met multiple people who seem genuinely confused about how I can have a moral code or sense of ethics without the Bible. They'll sit there and ask things like, I believe murder and assault is bad because the Bible says people who do that go to hell, but atheists don't believe in hell, so what's stopping you from doing things? And not realize that what they're actually telling me is that the only reason they're not out here assaulting and murdering people is because they're afraid of being punished for it, and that if, as happens to many people, they ever have a crisis of faith and stop believing, there will be nothing holding them back. And that is effing terrifying. Ali McGraw replies, I used to teach ethics to college students in a conservative area, so this came up a lot, and I always ask them, with genuine curiosity, if you found out for sure that God wasn't real, what would you do that God's stopping you from doing? The two most common answers were, skip church and get a tattoo, and I'd be like, not adultery followed by a murder spree? Which made at least some of them think twice about whether belief in God had to be the basis for moral behavior. After hearing this story, I don't feel as though my feelings on the situation have changed. Uh, screw you, Keith, and screw you, John. Terrible partner, terrible person to be with in general, and deserving to have the marriage thrown back in his face. This is what you get for kowtowing to crazy, insane parents. That's what you get for being a controlling freak. So yeah, what are your thoughts on this one, guys? I'd love to know what you think down in the comments below. Our next post is by user BigBeardFPV titled, 
feel like having a baby was a huge mistake. I'm her father, and no, I didn't have to push out the baby or carry her for nine months, but I don't think I've ever been more sad, exhausted, or depressed over a decision my whole life. Prior to the baby, I had lots of hobbies, traveled the world, had a thriving, loving relationship with my wife, and more. I built things, flew drones, worked on cars, and I loved my Wall Street job, but it all feels like that's gone. I have a nine-week-old, and it's been rough. Nobody can really explain how demanding and exhausting and selfless you have to be to raise a child. I'm just grabbing at any moments of peace, and when she sleeps, I just want to stay up and have a chance to be me. But I'm so tired that I can't even enjoy those moments. I find myself wanting to pack up and just disappear. I find myself not even wanting to wake up because I know what the day requires. When does it get better? When will I get seven to nine hours straight of sleep every night again? When will I get a chance to live again? I don't get time with my wife. Love life is non-existent. I don't get to travel or do any hobbies I had. I work nine to 10 hours a day and I'm exhausted even before the day starts. I feel so guilty because she's beautiful and it isn't her fault, but if I could go back and undo this decision, I would. I know not all the experiences are the same, but I'm hoping someone has a positive word or glimmer of hope for me. I hope I didn't ruin my life. An honest write-up from First Time Dad. Obviously, I'm not a parent, so I can't particularly weigh in on this, but I've read quite a bit. This is just growing pains. This is what it's like having a baby, a nine-week-old. Fortunately for most, unfortunately for some, they don't stay that way forever. So much like a puppy that you get gifted on Christmas that you don't really want because it's going to get big one day, you can't just give it back to the pound. You gotta stick this thing out for 18 years and it will get better. Believe. Also, I feel like it goes without saying that was a joke. That was a joke. Uh, people that do that are terrible. Do not abandon puppies on Christmas. Terrible idea. Do not do it. In the comments, C. Carter CC says, You're not raising a child yet. You are taking care of an infant. Over the next two to three years, this child will transform from something that needs your total care and attention to keep it alive to a valuable member of your family who will have its own thoughts, feelings, and excitement for the experiences that you and your partner give it. You'll be able to share your hobbies with the child. What child isn't going to go absolutely bonkers about drones? I hope as the child develops and shows more abilities and personality, you can grow to see it as someone you're excited to see grow so you can share new experiences with them. You made a lifelong family member who will, a year or two from now, adore all the experiences you have to give them. OP replies, Yeah, I grossly misunderstood the trade-off parents make for their children. I don't think I was ready for this level of sacrifice. If for nothing else though, this has given me a new appreciation for parents and I can't even fathom how single parents get through this time. You're a real jerk replies, it is a huge sacrifice in the infant stage, but I wholeheartedly agree with the person above. I was literally running on fumes for like a solid year. Around age two, it was like my son completely transformed into a whole ass person. Now he does things with me travels with me, likes to help with carpentry projects, enjoys camping trips, absolutely eats up any piece of information I want to show and teach him. He's stoked to help his dad with cars, is a Dodgers fan, etc. The baby stage is so, so, so hard. But soon he won't be a baby anymore, and you'll be amazed at how much you can share with him. And he'll sleep more. Also, I know others mentioned it below, but men, fathers, and non-birthing partners absolutely can get PPD. I would strongly encourage you to speak with your physician about this, or if you don't have a personal physician, either your pediatrician or your wife's OB can refer you to someone for help. PPD isn't just something that impacts women. Hey Delicious replies, My husband always says that daycare is the best money he ever spent. We both look forward to Monday mornings when we can hand off the babies to someone else and finally have some moments to ourselves, even if that means working. 95% of our bickering moments are related to who gets to shower, nap, exercise, poop, etc. It's insane that our basic needs become negotiable. You sure as hell ain't alone in your feelings. I think you wouldn't feel this way if you didn't care about the outcome, raising a happy, healthy, well-adjusted human. A good outcome requires a lot of work. And OP replies, Yeah, I feel guilty feeling this way. 
She is truly precious and not bad, she's just a baby, and I don't think I knew how much it takes. I'm slowly letting go of all of the other things that made me happy, and I'm trying to hunker down and just get through this. This is what I called the grieving period when I was pregnant. Life as I knew it was over, but a new one was waiting for me, don't get me wrong. Sounds like you're in the grieving period. It takes a while to adjust. Don't be too hard on yourself. And now, on to the update. Hello everyone, and happy Friday! I wasn't going to write this update as it's been so long, but I realized that we are a community, and part of the power in community is in normalizing the experiences that we sometimes feel we go through alone. You are not alone. And feel free to ask me any questions about my journey below. I'll do my best to respond to everyone. If you haven't read my first post, in summary, I was feeling lost, sad, depressed, resentful, exhausted, emotional, overwhelmed, scared, and questioning if I'd ruined my whole life in what was supposed to be a joyous experience. So now that you've survived my introduction, here is my two-year update. What does life feel like at this point? I could tell you what life is, but that's not how we connect as humans. We connect and function based on feelings and our perceptions. So with that being said, my heart has never been more full, my purpose has never been more clear, and while life has never felt the same, I'm not sure I'd ever wanted to go back to the perfect life I had before my little girl. She's about to turn two, and every morning I look forward to my daddy, 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 as she runs into my home office after she wakes up, and I look forward to my big goodnight hug, and goodnight daddy, before she is put into bed. Her laughs absolutely obliterate the shadows cast from a bad day at work, and chasing her on the playground at the park has become one of our favorite pastimes. When did it get better for you? It gets better in stages, but I'm still not sure how much of that is because things actually get much easier, or if there is a natural evolution we go through as first-time parents. I remember feeling absolutely exhausted and without any time. Today, I get full nights of sleep, usually. I have a few pockets to myself here and there, and while I don't get to sleep in late, stay up all night clubbing, or some of the more adolescent things that I used to enjoy, I am enjoying life again. Four months. First smiles were nice, but still not enough to change the quality of life. Ten months. She started eating food, making lots of funny faces, and developed a fondness for me even though I wasn't fond of her. Those long nights were few and far between, and while I didn't have free time, I had sleep. And we all know that sleep is extremely, insert curse word here, important after the initial exhaustion in the early stages. 13 months, a mobile baby is a whole new challenge, and putting on the baby shows wasn't enough to keep her happy. It is again a shift where baby-proofing becomes a huge deal, and you also look around and realize your space has been taken over by the baby. Baby stuff was everywhere. I was much less depressed, but ready to go back to normal life. Hint, it never happens. 16 months, the babies make huge growth leaps in this time. Playtime becomes much more fun, and suddenly you can start doing things like slightly longer car rides to your favorite food places, etc., I realized half my beard had started graying, but oh well, it is what it is. 20 months, words or babble, and more babble, and more words. This is a fun stage where exploration becomes a joint exercise. You find yourself enjoying rediscovering things you had forgotten were so amazing. Swings in parks and baby-appropriate bounce houses are commonplace. You also look up and realize that you've survived the infant stage and are now dealing with a fully-blown funny toddler. They are weird, they are emotional, they are fun, they are loving, and they trust you to the edges of the universe and back. This was one of my favorite time periods so far. Emotionally, I realized I was no longer sad, and I had a kid, and I found that being gone from her for too long made me sad. Ugh, you start to feel like a real parent here. 22 months, I love my little one so much. I love her so much that I want another. What is wrong with me? The period that you hate goes by so quickly if you just hold on and keep your head down. I'm back to most of my favorite things, albeit with less time to enjoy. I love music, for instance, so I purchased a headphone amplifier and a $300 pair of headphones so I can enjoy music while I work. I have several toys I play with occasionally, but more than anything, I feel whole. It gets better. 
it gets better, and now I can't believe that I'm ready to have another. Those of you in this community that helped me were a godsend. I'm happy to be here, and anyone can always reach out if they have questions or just need encouragement. In the comments, I don't want a username says, Oh my god, same boat. I thought I had ruined my life forever, and I'm not gonna lie, 16 months in, it sure does take a lot of energy, but I wouldn't trade kiddo for the world. I guess many parents just go through that hard hit of readjusting your whole life in an instant. OP replies, I don't think I understood that having kids meant giving up everything you worked hard for in order to give it to someone else. For me, it was my utter lack of control over my own time, for sure. OP replies, Absolutely. You go from weekends and evenings being recuperating time to being harder than the weekdays because of the huge time commitment. Gimme Gim Gim says, This was so nice to read. My husband and I had a hard couple of weeks, and he's on the fourth attempt at a crib transfer right now. I sent this to him, and I think he'll feel a little hope after reading it. That crap is hard. OP replies, Hardest crap I've ever done, for sure. Tell him I said he is doing an amazing job, and that before he knows it, he will be willingly looking to put the kid to bed and get the kid up. It gets much more fun. More power, more rest, and more life are coming for you both. Flash Minitu says, As a first-time father of an eight-month-old, this post has given me hope. There are so many moments where I don't feel too connected to my baby, and I feel so guilty about it. I find myself still trying to embrace fatherhood, and it sucks that it doesn't come easy to me like other dads. But reading about your experience made me think that maybe I just need more time with my baby, and hopefully, I will no longer grieve my previous life. Thank you, and well wishes to your family. And OP replies, You'll always miss the more carefree days, but you'll start to really enjoy the days you have now as well, man. Fellas nights and fantasy football leagues become much more sacred when you're a father. And I guess my contribution to this one is that I feel as though this was expected in a way. OP seemed to have been going through such a rough time. They didn't strike me as someone that was a bad person at all either, much like a lot of the stories that we read on this channel. And I'm honestly just so happy for them. I couldn't be happier for them, knowing how this situation has turned out. He is hoping that life gets better for OP in the future, and many more happy memories to be made with their child. And also best of luck if they do have a second one, because they'll have to go through that whole process again, and oh my god. Posted by user ImpressiveMix31, titled, Am I the a-hole for choosing not to pay my daughter's university fees, despite paying for her brothers? So my, 57 male, daughter Jane, 21 female, has recently been accepted into the university of her choice. Now, me and my wife, 55 female, are glad with this news, the only thing is that Jane got accepted to do an English degree. Now, Jane, compared to her two brothers, Mark, 28 male, and Leo, 30 male, was quite late in applying to university. When me and my wife asked her to start at 18, she claimed that she was not ready and wanted to have a little bit of rest, a little rest going out with friends and traveling the whole of last year with her boyfriend. It should be noted that I supplied Jane with all the money needed for her little rest. Now, me and my wife have nothing against Jane doing what she did. She's young, and young people love to explore and do what they do. However, before me and my wife allowed for Jane to do her thing, we made her promise that when she did apply to university, it was for a degree that was worth it. Jane was going through a weird phase where she wanted to be many things that were more on the creative side. Fast forward a year later, we find out that Jane's gone behind our backs and applied for an English degree. Both Leo and Mark took medical degrees and are now very good, well-paid doctors. One would think that this would motivate Jane to go on the same path, but instead, she has decided to be herself. I sat down Jane last night and told her that if she decided to go through with the English degree, I would not support her at all and that she would have to take out her own student loan. At this, she began crying, claiming that I was the worst dad ever and had always favoured her brothers over her because I had paid for their university fees. Now, this is totally incorrect. I did literally pay for her travel all of last year. My sons think that I'm being too harsh and that I should simply support Jane regardless of what she chooses, but is it too much to ask of my daughters to follow through with an actual useful degree? Edit, no, my daughter's year of travel does not add up to her brother's tuition fees, not even close. For those wondering, I work as a cardiologist. 
My not wanting my daughter to do an English degree is not because I'm sexist, but because I want her to do something useful which she can live off of instead of depending on me for the rest of her life. I don't even know if this is something she really wants to do or if it's another way of trying to rebel against me. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I decided to not pay for my daughter's uni fees because she has chosen to do an English degree despite my disapproval of it. I feel like this might make me an asshole because I have paid for her brother's uni fees. I understand why you think you're not the asshole in this situation, but why would this be another way for her to try to rebel against you? The way I see it is if she feels the need to rebel against you, does that not mean that you've done something wrong as a parent somewhere along the line here? Why have the brothers not felt the need to rebel against you? How have you treated them differently as opposed to your daughter here? Anyway, that's just food for thought. You're the a-hole. In the comments, your yogurt says, You're the a-hole. If it was because you paid an equal amount to her travels as her brother's education, I would say not the a-hole. But because she chose a degree that you disapprove of, you are punishing her. Also, I have an English degree. Sure, I don't earn as much as a doctor, but I've been a librarian for 10 years and have helped thousands of people. My pay is enough to keep me housed, fed, and comfortable. Edit, OP has admitted that the daughter is the black sheep of the family because she's always going against family norms. Imagine calling a family member a black sheep when all they wanted to do was study grammar. Ella Pan says, OP could have probably done with an English degree to know that it's paid and not pay yet. Aren't English degrees sought after anyway? Writing well is fundamental for many careers. LPZ2DY4 replies, I couldn't get past the me and my wife. Oof. Now, I'm not the grammar police, but if you're going to be so judgmental and snobby about a degree, get it together. Fool me once, shame on you says, Also the fact that he spelled paid two different ways within a single post. You'd think that he would understand the value of an education in its own right, just based on the fact that his own grasp of the fundamentals seems awfully precarious. But then, I never understand these posts whinging about kids who aren't choosing useful degrees as if a university degree is a trade school certificate. All education is useful because, well, it's education. Pay for it, don't pay for it, but if you don't understand the value of an education for its own sake, then just say that. OP is an ignoramus pretending that he actually cares about something important. Dr. Sachs says, you're the a-hole. Not everyone wants to do a medical degree. It's hard, it's long, and it leads you to being a doctor, which isn't for everyone. An English degree is a good degree. It's not a silly degree or a useless degree. I totally understand why she says you favorite her brothers. This is clear proof of that. Objective Mirror replies, I'm actually in the process of also graduating rather late in life with an English degree, which actually can be really fun too. Like, my thesis advisors actually spend hours and hours watching various TV series, for legit research purposes, and then analyzes everything about them. And now, on to the update. I would like to start by saying that I appreciate all the comments that were given, however unpleasant they were. They helped me understand that I was in the wrong, and some provided me with advice on what I should do if I wanted to keep in contact with my daughter. I realized that I was living too much in the past and wasn't taking into consideration how much things have changed in the last 30 years. My father worked as an artist in paintings and had little to no business. The only thing that saved my family from absolute poverty was my mother working in a supermarket. I guess I was afraid of such things happening to Jane. I hadn't actually talked to Jane about her degree until last Thursday. When I brought the topic up, she confessed to me that she was ready to take one of her degrees that I had recommended to her. I told her there was no need to, and she looked at me as if I was playing a cruel joke on her. I reassured her that I was being serious, and she began crying due to her happiness. I realized that I may have been favoring my sons due to their obedience to follow what I asked of them, and was punishing Jane for being herself rather than fitting into whatever I decided to make of her. Jane will be attending Oxford University later in the year to take her degree, and the relationship between us has never been better. I am highly appreciative of all the comments on my previous post. They helped me see how much I was prioritizing financial gain over my daughter's well-being, something which should never have been in question in the first place. In the comments, Dan the Man says, This is what I love to see. Assholes taking the judgment they've been given and deciding to change for the better rather than being stubborn. 
Wishing you and your daughter the best, OP. Alarmed Jellyfish replies, Yeah, it's refreshing to finally see an arsehole who acknowledges their mistakes and tries to set things right. Also, an English degree from Oxford? Yeah, his daughter will never have any issues with employment. Scarlett O'Hara says, Oxford is arguably the best university in the world. A degree in playing Candy Crush from Oxford would probably help set you up for life. I know, right? I couldn't believe the original post. Imagine a parent telling the kid, nope, sorry, you can't go to Oxford because it's not good enough for them. Glad they changed their mind. Some people would rather their child be miserable, barely passing medical school until falling out eventually, than doing well at something they actually like. And they have the goal to say they love their children unconditionally. Disgusting. I would be willing to bet at least one of the sons would have rather been something else than a doctor. Can confirm. I am a constant disappointment to my mother for many reasons, but a big one is that I wasted my potential by not becoming a doctor, lawyer, etc. At the time, I simply didn't want to be any of those things. Now, at 45, I'm pretty certain that if I had gone into a high-stress career like that, I would not be alive today. Honestly, I'm so glad that OP came back and apologized for this one. Like, Oxford of all schools? I would do anything to go to Oxford. I would be so happy if any of my kids ever get to Oxford. I understand that they're jaded because of their past with their father, but damn, recognize that you're throwing your baggage on your kids and stop, man. I'm so happy that OP has now recognized their wrongs and is working towards righting all their terrible behavior. I think that is the least that we can ask of them. Anyway, I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next post is by user WideChallenge4874 titled, Am I the a-hole for filling my co-workers bin with passive-aggressive tissues? I do admin. My role in the office I work in isn't public-facing. It is two linked open doors with two smaller offices and a break room leading off them. At the beginning of September, we got called back to the office. Over lockdown, my co-worker who has the desk next to me has acquired an emotional support dog. I am very allergic to dogs, and the first time I went back into the office, I wasn't expecting there to be a dog in it, so I didn't take any allergy meds. I asked her what the dog was doing there, and she explained that he was her new emotional support animal, and within an hour, my eyes and nose were streaming. I was struggling to breathe and sucking on my inhaler. The office manager allowed me to go home and work from home for that day, and I agreed to take the meds the next day. The next day I took meds and was a bit better, but I was sucking on my inhaler far more often than I normally would, and than is recommended for asthma which is well managed. I asked the manager if I could exchange desks with someone further away or move desks. This was refused, as was suggesting that my coworker and dog work in one of the side offices. So over the last few weeks I've been trying different allergy meds. I've finally gone for one that is prescription, not over the counter, and I'm using my inhaler less. My eyes aren't streaming, but my nose is. I'm going through boxes of tissues. I'm hoping I get used to these meds because right now they're making me a bit slow. My partner is driving me to and from work as I'm not comfortable taking them and driving yet. Anyway, I am working noticeably slower than I used to, and I was picked up on this over the phone by another senior colleague this week. I explained that I was on new medication and that I was hoping to be back up to speed soon. My coworker heard this conversation and told me I was passively aggressively complaining about her dog because we all know why you're taking the meds and that I was blaming the dog for my having gotten lazy and slow over lockdown. I said that that wasn't true and she didn't know what passive aggression was. I then left and made myself a cup of tea. Usually when we go to the break room, we offer to make everyone a cup. That was supposed to be my demo of passive aggression, but I heard her bitching about my attention-seeking tears. I literally couldn't stop my eyes streaming without medication and maybe lost it a bit. When she went to lunch, I tipped my waste bin full of tissues into hers, and it is full by lunch and then again by home time. I've done this every day this week. Another colleague says I've made my point and I need to stop, otherwise she's, the co-worker with the dog, planning on taking me to HR. My reaction was to say, let her, I don't care, which got a disapproving reaction from my colleague who was trying to warn me. I'm being childish, I know, but am I really the asshole here? 
I guess I'm airing on everyone sucks here for this one because what you are doing is wrong, yes, and it doesn't seem like there's a good solution to this issue. But at the same time, I completely understand where you're coming from, and I also think she's an asshole for what she is doing to you. Two wrongs don't make a right in this situation, but I don't know what the solution is. I'm unfortunately just gonna have to say everyone sucks here. Now for some relevant comments. Are you forcing a coworker to deal with your used tissues during a pandemic? This part of the comment originally said you're the asshole before the reply from the cleaner below. Editing judgment, everyone sucks here. You shouldn't need to get sick at your place of work, but I still think the tissue thing is disgusting. Is it possible to get a doctor's note about your allergies and maybe seek out HR? And OP replies, I'm filling up her bin with my used tissues. If she wants to use her bin in the afternoon, then she'd have to empty the bin. Otherwise, it's the cleaner who empties the bins. So, you're happy to let another person deal with your snot during a pandemic. And FYI, I meant for co-worker to include any other worker at the place of employment. People cleaning included. You are most definitely the asshole in my opinion. Unsanitary. Replying to the comment above, I'm a cleaner. We are routinely expected to clean out bins with worse than snotty tissues. Trust me when I say, I'll take a bucket of used tissues over a bucket filled with human waste. And OP says, I guess I hadn't really thought about the pandemic because my tissues are allergy snot, not COVID snot. But are you saying that if I'm filling my own bin of tissues, then that's over and above what I should expect from the office cleaner? I hadn't thought of that. I'm not even sure where spare bin liners are kept for me to empty my own bin. I just want to say that I'm sorry and have amended my judgment. Allergies are serious, and I do hope you can work without getting sick. I do, however, stand by my thoughts about the tissues. I'm beginning to feel like a total dumbass for not already going to HR. It didn't occur to me that I could after the manager said that I couldn't move desks or anything. Why I've not already gone to HR? Because I'm a dumbass and it took the comments here before I realized I should have done that weeks ago. I can't go to HR until Monday, but I have emailed my union for advice. Yeah, I've contacted my union. The rep even emailed back today, on a Sunday. She's meeting with me tomorrow to go through what my next steps are. Apparently she can come with me to any and all HR meetings, even if they're scheduled because my colleague puts in a complaint. So hopefully I stop thinking through my snot-filled haze tomorrow. I have no idea how I'd go about suing them, and I'm not totally convinced that I could. I'm not in the US or Germany, or what that would mean for my work environment. However, I did get my union and HR involved, and I really should update this. And now, on to the update. I've met with my union rep, and with their advice, composed an email and sent it to my supervisor. We've also requested a meeting with HR to discuss reasonable accommodations for my allergies. Update 2. Whoa. So the TLDR. I get to work from home two days a week. I still have my job, and my coworker can bring her dog in when I'm at home. My union rep is a lovely woman who knows her stuff, and HR seem to have spent their time bollocking my supervisor. My supervisor responded to the initial email by telling me that we had already discussed my requests, and I just had to suck up sitting next to the dog. So then I sent an email, in reply to that one, CC'd to HR saying that I couldn't come in the next day as my partner wasn't available to drive me. Which is not strictly true, and I wasn't safe to drive due to the allergy meds that I needed to take because of the ESA dog. Supervisor replied with a really unprofessional email, and according to my colleague, the one who told me that I was being a dick, got hauled into a meeting about that which involved one of the bosses actually shouting. I spent two days irritating my GP surgery for notes, re-allergies, and asthma history, as well as a specific doctor's note for this incident. Then there was the meeting with HR. There was me, union rep, two HR people, supervisor, supervisor's boss, and supervisor's boss's boss. They didn't take me to task at all. Instead, they wanted to accommodate my health and me to stop taking medicine that affected my ability to drive to be able to work. So we worked out that I will work in the office Monday to Wednesday and home from Thursday to Friday. My colleague will work from home Monday to Tuesday and half day Wednesday. She and I both need to be in half day on Wednesday, which will be without her dog, but she can bring him in Thursday to Friday, and because the office gets deep clean Saturday, this shouldn't be a problem for me by Monday. Next week is the first week that we will actually try this. 
Oh, and the office gossip is that the co-worker with the dog didn't actually get any sort of official accommodation to bring him in, but she was friends with the supervisor, which is why he was just there, and no one checked about co-worker allergies, etc. This went super smoothly. Union rep knew all the right paperwork and what to say to everyone. Join a union, people. In the comments, the Mummerath says, An ESA isn't a service animal trained for a specific task. That alone should have been enough reason for OP's co-worker to leave it at home once it was clear that it was causing OP legitimate health problems. Things would have been hairier and harder to deal with if the pet was a service animal, but this should have been a non-issue. I think the supervisor was too dumb to realize that if an asthma attack is severe enough, the asthmatic can actually die. I have been hospitalized multiple times because my allergies have been so bad that my puffer has stopped working because fluid has built up in my lungs, and if I had waited another day, I would have been diagnosed with pneumonia. Allergies combined with asthma are no joke. My hubby and I have plans in place to help reduce my exposure, but that's only possible because I'm a stay-at-home mum. But in OP's situation, yeah, I probably would have resigned and maybe even sued if HR didn't handle this as well as they did. I hope this solution works for OP. Quote, but she's friends with the supervisor. Say no more, this was the root cause of this whole mess. People don't need to be friends with supervisors to bring their non-service dogs to work. Hell, it's a perk at some companies. People everywhere feel absolutely entitled to do this and wholeheartedly believe their pet at work does not inconvenience anyone, or they just don't care. Nobody bothers to check whether there are folks who are allergic among the staff, or to give a heads up. It's not the fact that being friends with the manager allows her to bring in the dog, it's the fact that they are friends, that the manager didn't do jack about it, even after OP bringing it to their attention. Holy shit, how obvious is it that they didn't need an emotional support dog? Sounds like someone got a pet during lockdown and then didn't want to deal with paying for doggy daycare or doggy walkers or separation anxiety once they had to go back into the office. As much as I like dogs, I would hate working with one in the office very close to me if it was not a trained service animal. They are distracting, may stink, and unlike service dogs, are not trained correctly. Yup, I've got a dog, and luckily he just sleeps when I'm at work from home. But the office is distracting enough without a dog there to take my attention away from my screen, as well as everything else. And yeah, I'm pretty glad that the situation resolved the way it did. The way these stories usually go, you don't get that many people involved in a situation or conflict resolution like this. It's obvious they looked ahead to the future and were like, oh my god, pneumonia is a risk. That's not something I personally thought of when I thought of my you're the asshole slash everyone sucks here judgment. So apologies to those saying that I'm an asshole for my everyone sucks here judgement because I've never had to deal with asthma. Anyway, still kind of crazy to me that so many people got involved, but this is an amazing outcome. And, you know, I kind of agree with these people here. What the dog doing? Why the dog in the office? Just get rid of it. Leave it at home. Case closed. Posted by user Wooden Maintenance 40 titled... I'm 24 female, getting a series of cosmetic surgeries, and my 27 male boyfriend is acting like I'm going to pass away. I'm going to have several cosmetic surgeries, nose job, bichectomy, laser freckle removal, etc. in the next few months. My boyfriend initially was against it, but later he agreed to support me and kind of accepted it. But his attitude towards me is really startling me. Every day he takes my face in his hands and kisses my nose and cheeks for several minutes. He takes photos of me very often. Last night he believed I was asleep when he went to bed and he kissed me and whispered, My beautiful girl, how I'm going to miss you. It's like he thought I'm going to die because of the surgeries or something, when they're totally safe. How can I make him see that he isn't going to lose me? TLDR, I'm getting cosmetic surgeries, and my boyfriend is acting like I'm going to die on the table. I mean, I think it's fairly obvious that he doesn't think you're going to die, I just think the current version of you that he sees is going to pass away in a sense. You're doing this surgery for one reason or another, that's a highly personal choice, and obviously I respect it, but with this many surgeries you're going to come out looking different. Same same, but different. Everyone grieves lost differently, I guess. In the comments, Trotty says, For the love of God, can women stop looking for plastic surgeries to solve their insecurity issues? All it does is make you look like a creepy doll. 
A natural face is so much more attractive than plastic. Your boyfriend clearly loves you for the way that you look now, not how you think that you should look. If you continue down this path, you will truly end up alone. Nobody wants to watch their loved one put themselves under the knife repeatedly due to literal mental issues. Whether you want to believe it or not, anytime you go for a surgery, there is always a risk of something going wrong and you dying. You will not be satisfied with the surgeries, and you'll keep wanting more and more until you end up looking like these mother effers. <laughs> I don't know about you, but the Bogdanov twins? Kinda sexy. Do yourself a favor, cancel all of your appointments, and immediately book yourself into therapy. And OP replies, F that looks bad. Captain Impervid says, Looking at this post and at your post history, my heart breaks that you were so clearly hurting and have had your self-esteem so flattened. People can be cruel. I don't know if it was family or peers or strangers who were the main tormentors, but whoever it was, they're terrible and so very wrong. I can't tell you whether to go through with your surgeries or not, but I still ask, beg even, that you do two things. First, find a therapist someone who specializes in body image issues. Because it seems like the way that you feel about yourself is so negative that changing how you look won't make you feel as different as you hope. Please, do this regardless of whether you have these surgeries. Second, if you do the surgery, please make sure that the surgeon is a board-certified plastic surgeon. Because plastic surgery is so lucrative, a lot of doctors will bill themselves as plastic surgeons whether they've had training as one or even training as a surgeon. In most cases, it's not even illegal. So make sure that you're in the best hands possible because the consequences could be catastrophic. If I can, after all of that, offer a little more personal input, listen to what your boyfriend is saying. He loves you and loves the way you look right now. Make sure you consider that in your thinking. And I'll share one more thing. My wife got me a gift this year, a leather bracelet with a message on the inside. Your anxiety is lying to you. Reminding myself of that helps me daily, and I hope it can help you some, too. And now, on to the update. I ended up cancelling the surgeries, at least until I had spoken with a therapist to double-check my mental state. I hadn't told my boyfriend yet when he asked me to talk. He sat me down and told me that he couldn't stay silent any longer. He says he can't support me in changing my face and skin without any good reason. Also, he thinks that I'm risking my life for nothing and ruining myself when I'm a perfectly normal and beautiful girl. Honestly, I was crying by that point. Then he asked me if I didn't think that he likes me and why his opinion is worth less than the opinion of random people. I told him that I know he loves me, but I couldn't answer the second question. He was happy to hear that I had delayed the surgeries, since he doesn't want to break up, but he can't promise me he could love the new me. Knowing all of this, I don't think that I'll have the surgeries done. I love my boyfriend more than I dislike my looks. He is now helping me to find a good therapist that helps me to feel better. TLDR, I have talked to my boyfriend, and I'm not going to have the surgeries. And I'm starting therapy soon. In the comments, Weekly Conversation 8 says, It's good that you're looking into starting therapy. Make sure you find one who specializes in this. Remember, it's not an instant fix, and sometimes you have to go through a few therapists to find the right one. Can't second this enough. OP seriously needs to look for a therapist that specializes in this kind of situation. You can't go into cosmetic surgery without fully knowing and embracing what it entails. Exactly. Your mental health can affect how you see yourself. It really does. I've never liked my nose and also have a deviated septum. It's really bad. However, I've had a lot of self-image issues, and I don't want to get surgery till I can say to myself that I'm doing this for me and me only. I don't want it to snowball into the next surgery and the next, and I'm never happy. Bad Kitty Good Pussy says, I think you did the right thing. In my experience, most people who do multiple cosmetic surgeries are never satisfied and always find something new about their bodies that bothers them. The issue isn't the body, it's the mind. They mostly have self-esteem issues, and they fail to see that changing their appearance won't ever change that emptiness inside. Therapy is a good idea, and your boyfriend is a keeper. I tend to agree with this, body dysmorphia is terrible. And there is no guarantee that altering your appearance through all those surgeries would help at all with that body dysmorphia. Good on the boyfriend for being as supportive as he is, he is definitely a keeper. 
What do you guys think of this one? I'd love to hear your opinions down in the comments below. Our next post is by user Real Leather 1989 titled, Am I the a-hole for not telling my wife to tone down her dancing at our wedding? My wife, 29 female, and I, 29 male, got married last weekend. We've been together since our first year of uni, and we got married on the 10-year anniversary of the day that I asked her to be my girlfriend. We've grown up together, gotten through thick and thin, and I know there is no one else that I want to spend my life with. For some context, my wife is half Spanish, and we incorporated a lot of Spanish traditions into our wedding. It also meant that, with all her family there, the reception turned into quite the party. I was pretty tired after dancing for a while, so I went to sit and talk with my family whilst my wife kept dancing with her cousins and friends. After a bit of chatting, my mum and aunt essentially told me that they weren't too pleased with my wife's dancing to songs like Low and Sexy Back, saying that her slut drops and wiggling her bottom like that weren't appropriate on her wedding day and were disrespectful to me. To be honest, I didn't see anything wrong with the way that she was dancing. It was nothing more than I think any person would dance to songs like that in the club when they were having fun and had a couple of drinks, and I told them as such. They said that I should tell her to tone it down, but she was having fun with her friends and I didn't see anything gratuitous about it, nor was she super drunk, so I told her that it wasn't my place. We ended up wrapping up the party soon afterwards anyway. The morning after, we had breakfast with my family, and my aunt mentioned to my wife that she was pleased that I eventually got her to tone down the fiesta. My wife asked her what she meant by that, and my mum told her about the conversation from last night. My wife was the one who told me about this, as I was talking to my dad and uncle at the time, and I didn't hear. My wife apologised, but was then very quiet for the rest of the day, and when we left the hotel, she was very upset with me, saying that I should have told her that she had offended my family, and that she was humiliated that I hadn't told her anything about it on the night, like my aunt had assumed. I was sorry that she was humiliated, but I was not sorry that I hadn't told her to tone it down, because in my opinion, she didn't do anything wrong. She still thinks that I should have just told her, because now she won't have a good relationship with her in-laws. She doesn't have a good one with her parents. I'm mad at my mum and aunt, and I want them to apologise to us. But she refuses to bring it up with them, and wants to apologise again to them when they come over this weekend. I want to stand up for her because I think they're being incredibly rude, but she doesn't want that. She just wants to mend bridges. She's still upset with me because I don't see it her way, and because I'm not sorry that I didn't tell her. So am I the a-hole? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I might be the asshole because I didn't tell my wife what my mum and aunt said, and now she's upset because she feels I let her humiliate herself, but I don't think she did anything wrong. I can see why you think that you're the asshole for that, but in reality, no, no you're not. From the get-go, these two suck. Your aunt's comment saying, tone down her fiesta? Disgusting. Disgusting person. Sorry, didn't know it was cool to be racist to you about your wife. That's fun. How about you, auntie? Turn down the stick up your ass. You're looking like a scarecrow right now. Anyway, that's my long-form way of saying I don't think you're the asshole at all for what you've done. I don't agree with your wife. I feel like there are boundaries that need to be set. Let's enforce those boundaries. Let's not kowtow to these individuals trying to stomp all over them. Screw your mum. Screw your auntie. Not the asshole. In the comments, Layla says, You and your wife are not the asshole. Your family is so controlling and rude that when going to you didn't work, they told her to her face that she danced provocatively and pretended you did what they told you. This needs to stop immediately. You need to stand up for her and give them serious consequences. Otherwise, they will continue this throughout your relationship. And racist. Don't forget racist. Tone down the fiesta? The audacity! Edit, if hating the Irish can be racist, so can hating the Spanish. Race is a social construct and does not always mean skin tone. They barely waited for the couple to get married before starting the racist BS. Well, they didn't start, they just revealed it. Not the asshole OP. Yeah, your wife was not disrespectful to you. Your family was disrespectful to your wife. They put you in a really shitty position. I can see why your wife might wish that you told her and now she's upset, but if you had told her, she likely would have been upset then, and I can understand why you wanted to keep that BS away from her and make sure she had fun at her wedding. 
It was shitty of them to say to you, and even more shitty of them to say to her. I understand that your wife is nervous about having a good relationship with your family, but honestly, if they're being this dickish to her at the wedding, it doesn't seem enormously likely that the relationship will be very good anyway. That sucks, but it's their fault, not hers. At the end of the day, the relationship that matters the most is the one between the two of you. I think you made the right call personally, but you shouldn't invalidate her feelings now. In my opinion, you should say something along the lines of this. I think my family was totally wrong to judge you for dancing with your friends and having fun on our wedding day, and I only didn't tell you about it because I didn't agree with their opinion, so I didn't think that it mattered. I understand that you're worried about your relationship with them, and so if you want me to tell you things like that in the future, then I will. But in my opinion, they are the ones that should be worried about maintaining a good relationship with you, as you are the most important person in my life, and your happiness is my top priority. Candid Crescent says, Not the asshole. I'm proud of how you handled the situation, but mostly for not ruining the fun that your wife was having. Your wife, though, needs to unlearn to accept that kind of sexism just because she wants to have a good relationship with her in-laws, or anyone for that matter. The fact your mom and aunt sexualized her dancing at her own frickin' wedding is disgusting and sounds like a them problem. And now, on to the update. Hi all, bit shocked at the level of response to my post. Thanks for all the comments, I did read as many as I could. I talked to my wife. I apologized for not telling her what my aunt had said and that it was only because I believed what my aunt had said had no merit and that she as my wife was always going to be my priority rather than placating them. She accepted my apology. She still was wary to try and confront them about it though. And I ended up saying something that I read in the comments that broke my heart. That my wife was probably more than anything grieving the loss of the new family she thought she was going to have and she immediately burst into tears. So that commenter was spot on. Her parents went through a very bitter divorce that damaged their relationship with their children permanently. So it was a difficult conversation, but we came to the conclusion that we had to confront my mum and aunt in the hope of salvaging any relationship, though my wife wanted me to do it on our behalf, which is fair. I called my aunt and basically let her have it, she wasn't apologetic at all and said some pretty nasty things that I won't repeat, so that was an immediate end to that relationship. I then called my mum to do the same and she was very ashamed. For context, my aunt is her older sister and we invited her because my mum and my wife wanted her there. My aunt had never met my wife, but my wife really wanted to meet my whole family. My mum grew up in a very conservative Christian household, and although she stopped believing, my aunt didn't. So there's been some distance and disappointment. My mum apologised to me and said she had been missing her sister and had let herself get brought back into old habits. She wants the opportunity to make it up to my wife, but my wife and I have agreed on low contact for now and we'll see how we go. My wife did say okay to flowers and a letter that my mum wanted to send, but I told my mum pretty sternly not to expect anything from my wife which she took pretty well. Most importantly, my wife now seems to be a lot happier. I don't know if our relationship with my mum will be as trusting ever again, but it at least will be one with clear boundaries. Part of the reason for the delayed update is that, amidst all of this, my wife realised she had missed her period, and lo and behold, she's pregnant. Cue panic because she drank at our wedding, and this is totally unplanned. But otherwise, we're ecstatic. We haven't told anyone other than her mother and sister, and now we're going to have to really think about how this is going to work with my mum, but I'm now feeling way more confident that we'll be able to figure it out together. As long as my wife is happy, I don't care. In the comments, Funky Zebra 1999 says, Congratulations, and well done for stepping up to your frightful, bigoted, hate-filled, sour lemon of an aunt. She is clearly a lost cause, but the relationship with your mum sounds like it might have some eventual potential. Good luck with that. I wonder how long it will be before the judgmental and critical horrors at your wedding start asking you, or probably others, about your new baby. Hmm. All the best to you both, and please tell your wife not to stop dancing. At the next family function, it would be a good idea if you joined her. Imagine the outrage. Capo Explains says... 
Quote, she wasn't apologetic at all and said some pretty nasty things that I won't repeat, so that was an immediate end to that relationship. If you don't mind my curiosity, without asking for specific quotes, was it condescending, everyone who's not a stuck-up Christian prude like myself is the devil types of things, or super effing racist types of things? I ask because tone down the fiesta from the last post was less a racism red flag and more a small industrious nation whose chief export is racism red flags. Hitch Please replies, If I had to guess, some racism, xenophobia, and a healthy splash of slut-shaming was her magical recipe. Mixed together and voila, no contact. World's Greatest Frog says, OP, I just want to say that you sound like a good husband who is shouldering new responsibilities while trying to honor the old. I wish you the very best, and it sounds like you have the foundation of a relationship built around respect and of communication. And I think it goes without saying, congratulations OP, and I do hope this next chapter of your life is amazing and filled with only people that are there to support you and your wife. And not saying disgustingly ugly things like this aunt. Shame on her, thank god she's out of your life, isn't coming back, she deserves everything she got. Also, thank you for letting her have it, that fills me with joy, I won't lie, it fills me with a lot of joy. Anyway, what do you guys think of this whole situation? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next post is by user Revenant Rising, titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my parents that if they won't tell me the truth, I'll assume the worst of them? So, my 14 female family totally exploded while I was on spring break two weeks ago. I went on a trip with my grandparents and came back to my mum moved out and a serious sit-down talk about them divorcing. It's not exactly a surprise because they've both been acting weird and shady for a while, but like, that's not what I was expecting to come back to, and they could have let me unpack first, at least. They asked me if I had any questions, and I asked them which one cheated, because that was my first thought. They got super uncomfortable and said that the reasons between them were private. I said, not when it means I suddenly lost my family over it, and they owe me at least some reason that this is happening, and we don't love each other anymore doesn't cut it. You don't just stop loving someone for no reason. That's dumb. So what? They said that was all I needed to know, and we need to talk about how the living situation was going to work and everything. I told them that I don't want to live with either of them if they're going to be like that. Everyone has been mad since then, and my mum came over to talk it out last night. They still don't want to tell me why. I told them both that if they were going to hide stuff, I'll just make up my own worst case and go with that. Since mum left, it can all be her fault. And since it's her fault, I won't live with her or go see her. She got upset and said that was unfair and that it wasn't her fault. I told her to give me the real reason then or just deal with it. My dad said that I was out of line and I said that it can be all his fault then and the same deal. That started an argument between the two of them, but I'm holding my own. I'm pretty sure at least one of them will crack and tell me what happened soon so I can decide how I feel about it. I don't need like graphic detail but a simple someone cheated or mum is a secret lesbian don't tell anyone or we've both really changed a lot and don't want the same things would help. If one of them did something bad I want to know. If they won't own up or explain why there are no bad guys they can both be the bad guy. I had to talk to my school counsellor today and she said that it's totally understandable but playing them against each other is going to hurt everyone. So am I the asshole? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I might be the asshole because I'm trying to get an answer by playing my parents against each other and it's already a hard situation and it probably makes them both feel bad. I'm going with no assholes here in this case. Hot take but OP's 14. They're 14 years old, they haven't lived life right now, they don't understand relationships like this. Would you expect a 14 year old to understand the inner machinations of a marriage that has been going on for god knows how long? OP is grieving currently, they're going through the anger stage, they're understandably upset and people are lying to them, lying by omission. The parents are doing an amazing job here by not playing sides, understandably they're trying to resolve the issue with OP and her anger. But really, there are no winners in situations like this, and you do need a counsellor or an intermediary to deal with situations where the kid is going to pit you against each other. 
This is so complex, there is no good answer, and currently there is no good outcome. I don't think the kid is an asshole in this situation for being young, dumb, and unaware of the world. And I think that anyone that attacks OP for that needs to take a long hard look in the mirror at themselves. In the comments, Bailey the Nerd says, You're the asshole. Jesus kid, your parents are having far more decorum in this divorce than most divorcing parents ever have. They're not trying to pin blame all on one parent and have to work out this incredibly massive shift in their lives themselves. This is a huge thing for them emotionally as much as it is for you. If they're not at each other's throats and trying to make things as smooth for you as possible, you can at least show a little decorum and give them some time to work up to explaining it to you. Not everything needs to be the result of some big, explosive, dramatic moment. Life isn't TV or TikTok. Go out and touch grass. Swoozy Clancy replies, I'll add that I think her parents are doing the right thing and not telling her. Not every conflict needs to have a bad guy, even if one parent betrayed or hurt the other. OP's life has been turned upside down and she's looking for someone to blame, which is a natural response. OP's relationship to each of her parents individually doesn't need to change just because their relationship to each other has. Teenagers are developmentally not generally able to see grey areas in complex situations like this. Let's assume, as OP is, that one parent cheated on the other. It's a very good reason to get a divorce. There was a betrayal in that relationship. I don't think that it means that OP should now see that parent as the bad guy and refuse to ever see that parent again. This isn't healthy for OP or the parent. I don't condone cheating, but I don't think it's necessarily a reason to lose your relationship with your kid. Marriages are very complicated, more than a 14 year old is able to realize. How many Reddit posts have we seen where a kid's entire relationship with their parent is ruined over things like this? Mountain Bean 3479 says, OP doesn't sound mature enough to know the reason, no matter what it is. Swoozy Clancy replies, I agree. The cheating was just an example. My parents divorced when I was young, and there was cheating involved. Even into my 20s, I felt like I needed to know who was at fault. Now that I'm much older, married, divorced, remarried, and have kids, I know that relationships, and especially marriages, are really complex. Almost always two imperfect people trying to make something work. Not to sound patronizing at all, but the inner workings and downfall of a marriage is beyond what a 14 year old can comprehend. Her parents are being very mature in working together to protect their relationships with their child instead of pointing fingers and putting her in the middle. Shana2010 says, I think you are 14 years old and don't understand adult relationships. I'm sorry they sprung it on you like this. It isn't fair. In time, you will learn the truth of what happened between your parents, but right now it may be too raw for them. They are human, and it's painful for them too. Be grateful they aren't blaming each other to you. Many things can end a relationship, not necessarily cheating or being interested in a different gender. Give some slack for getting a divorce, but you have every right to express your feelings. I'm very sorry that this happened to you. And back up to the post, there's an edit. Okay, I'm the asshole. That's okay. I did some digging on my own tonight, and I know pretty much what happened now. I don't feel bad about being an asshole to assholes. Thanks. Well, at least we have confirmation that whatever they did was bad. Really bad by the sounds of it. My, 20 male, best friend, lesbian, 20 female, said she has feelings for me. Now we are both confused. Just to give some context, I have known this girl, let's call her Kay, since we were 14. I met Kay when we were paired up in a group project for this one class. I found out we had a lot in common and we became friends. Over time, I developed a huge crush on her. Sophomore year, I asked her to homecoming and she said yes. It was a good time, but after, it didn't really lead to anything. I got the sense that she didn't like me the way that I liked her. Junior year, Kay came out as lesbian. Honestly, I wasn't super surprised, but I was a little heartbroken. I decided to put all my feelings away and just be supportive. I was really enjoying my senior year. I started dating this girl the summer before school started, thanks to Kay setting us up, and things were going well until COVID hit. My girlfriend broke up with me because she couldn't handle a relationship at the time. 
I was sad about that, but more upset that I was going to miss things like prom and senior trip. Kay knew that I was upset and invited me over for a fake prom, which consisted of us getting dressed up for photos and immediately going inside to play old Wii games and watch movies. She even bought some of my favorite snacks. Still probably the nicest thing anyone has ever done for me. First year of college sucked. Nothing noteworthy happened other than Kay and I going to the same school. Kay started to date this girl who I'm 99% sure hated me for no reason. They break up in the summer, and now we can move on to the important part of my story. Kay and I decided to get a place near campus together for this school year. Her mom thought that it was weird, but her dad, who's the coolest guy ever by the way, thought that it was a good idea. We had a lot of good times so far. My favorite thing about living together has been our late night talks. We talk about anything from school, sports, hot girls, bad hookups, etc. Last night during one of our talks, Kay randomly brings up that she might be bisexual. Not gonna lie, I felt a little jealous thinking that she hooked up with a random guy, but she tells me that she has feelings for me. I kind of laughed it off at first until she started crying. She said she started having feelings for me a month ago and was super confused about her sexuality. I apologized for laughing and said we'd talk tomorrow. I didn't want to make any bad decisions that could ruin our friendship. So right now she's at class and I'm just alone thinking. This is literally a dream come true. So like, why am I hesitating at all? I guess I don't want her to just immediately change her mind after and make things weird between us. I am anxiously waiting for her to get back. I really do love her though. I never thought that I'd have a chance at this kind of love. Any advice on what I should say to her when she gets back? I feel like I'm overthinking this. In the comments, you just gotta be honest with her. Tell her how you've always felt and ask her what she wants to do. Admit you were scared of things not working out and try to decide if you want to try it anyway. From the tone of your post, it seems like you might regret it forever if you don't try it with her. OP says, You were definitely right about that last point. I'll always wonder what might have been if I don't try. Just go slow and treat it like a new relationship, assuming you both decide to proceed. Take the time to build this potential aspect of your relationship as strong as your friendship. Go for it, my boy. Communicate a lot with each other. If it doesn't work out, you'll at least want that friendship. You've known each other for six years. You guys should be pretty solid. OP says, I'll go for it. She should be here soon. And yeah, my hope is that we'll at least still be friends by the end of this. Quote, this is literally a dream come true, so why am I hesitating at all? Because you're trying to keep yourself safe and you rightfully are interpreting pursuing someone with her as a risk. It's totally understandable to want to avoid getting hurt. If she were a more casual crush, it might be easier, but you have had feelings for her for a long time. The closer something is to our hearts, the greater its capacity is to hurt us. And rather than dismiss that fear with platitudes or uninformed optimism, I will instead say this. You are resilient. You can handle crappy times. If you decide to take the risk of pursuing something with her and it doesn't work out in the end, it will suck. Probably big time, but you can handle that suck. You can get through it. You have gotten through other bad times in your life and you can get through whatever outcome this may have too. On her end, she's probably feeling pretty confused. When your sexual identity runs counter to the mainstream, it's pretty easy to end up internalizing the label that you picked as part of your identity. So she has had lesbian as part of her identity for a few years. And from an external perspective, you likely have thought of her that way for some time as well. And now she's experiencing something she did not think was possible, which forces her to question that core part of her identity, which was likely difficult for her to accept in the first place. It can be a bit of a mind F, as I'm sure you can imagine, but labels are meant to be descriptive rather than prescriptive. That is, a label is meant to describe your experiences up till now, not dictate what experiences you can have in the future. It's not like you pick out a label when you're a teen and then have to stick to that your whole life. When she decided that lesbian was the label that best fit her, it was because up until that point, she hadn't experienced attraction to genders other than her own. But that doesn't mean that she can't experience attraction to any other genders for the rest of her life. 
It simply described what she knew about her attraction then. You can still be cautious. It's not an all or nothing thing, where you have to jump in without looking. You don't have to give her your whole heart, no strings attached, right at this moment. If you decide the risk is worth taking, you can take things slow and make sure you both check in with each other often. And like I said, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But you can handle that and you'll know for sure instead of wondering, what if? OP says, I appreciate the response. I think you definitely summed up my feelings perfectly and probably hers as well. I think I need to go take a walk, lol. She texted me that she'll be here in an hour and that she's not purposely avoiding me, so I'm happy about that. And now, on to the update. First of all, thanks to the people who commented on my original post. So, Kay got here later than usual so she could finish an assignment and have the whole night to talk. When she walked in, we both smiled at each other and didn't say anything, I thought the mood was going to be light-hearted, but as soon as we started talking, we both got really emotional. I took the advice to just be completely honest about how I felt. I told her how I had a huge crush on her when we first met. She knew. I also told her how grateful I was just to have her in my life, and whatever happens, I don't want to ruin that. Kay agreed and gave her side of the story. The long comment on my original pretty much nailed what she was feeling. She felt like she was stuck with the label that she put on herself when she was younger. After her last breakup, she started to question herself and her feelings towards me. She eventually sorted out her feelings last month, but was afraid to tell me. We laid out some of the possible risks of being together, but realized we were probably being too hard on ourselves. So we're going to give this relationship a try. We're going to take it slow and communicate a lot about how we are feeling. We ended the night with a long hug and some tears. Yesterday morning we talked some more about things like spring break plans and when we would tell our parents and friends. Parents will come when the time is right, but our friends will probably just figure it out themselves. Honestly, there was a super awkward vibe between us in the morning. I think both of us were scared of trying to make a move or trying something different. We both thought of some fun date ideas for the week to break the awkwardness. Things were a lot better last night. We cuddled for a while, which wasn't really something new, but it feels a lot better now. Overall, I'm just hoping that I don't screw this up. We have a week off from work and school starting today, so it should be a good time. Thanks again to the few people who commented on my first post. I think I needed someone to say, go for it. And now on to the second update. Hey, I thought I'd give a quick update to the people who followed and asked to keep them updated. Probably my last post for a long time. Don't really want to keep posting my personal life on here. So Kay and I already had plans to visit our families for spring break before we entered our relationship, which sucked because we didn't want to be apart. We live like 10 minutes from each other, so yesterday we drove back in one car. Wow, way to make it obvious. I said screw it and convinced my parents to let Kay and her parents come over for dinner. Dinner was good and we all played a few games afterwards. We had to hold in our laughter when her dad made a comment about how nice it is that Kay and I have been friends for so long. I guess it's possible that he knows because that's definitely his style of humour. Now the biggest part of the update, we had our first kiss. Kay wanted to go on a late night drive just like we used to. I was dropping her off and she just leaned in and kissed me. It wasn't super long, but it was really nice. We have some plans for this week, but we're also broke as F, so like I said, I'm probably done posting these for now. I feel like the first kiss is a good note to end on. Thanks for all the nice comments. If I do post again, hopefully it's a positive update. And now for the final update. Hey. I saw a few notifications about new followers on this profile, and apparently my post was shared somewhere, so that's cool. I figured I could give a quick update about Kay and I. These last two months flew by. Relationship is going great. Not much has changed in our dynamic, except we kiss and have sex now. We just moved out of our apartment because the semester is over. I'm gonna miss that place. We were planning on telling people about us once the semester was over, but someone got drunk and posted a picture of us kissing on their Instagram story. 
Of course, Kay's parents saw it and told my parents because they are all friends. They were happy for us, so that's good. So yeah, that's about it. It's funny looking back at how nervous I was. Now in the comments, quote, I'm 99% sure they hated me for no reason. Hmm, I think there might be a reason. He was the friend she told her girlfriend not to worry about. She got art roomed. <laughs> That's so cursed. Yeah, me and my mate, we're just making an art room in our house. Nothing untoward, partner. No reason to uh, be worried about gay sex happening in there. No, no, no. She probably noticed the way that Kay talked about him. That's my thinking. She probably wouldn't shut up about him. Everyone has that friend where you just say, yeah, Jim and I, I was talking to Jim. Jim said a really funny thing. Oh my God, then just date him already. Yeah, the couch and I, you know, I was just talking to the couch and couch said something really funny to me. Quote, she felt like she was stuck with the label she put on herself when she was younger. I suspect this is super common among a lot of young people. Sometimes it takes a while to figure yourself out, and there's often a lot of pressure in teenage years to lock in on a personal identity. I think some kids can get too focused on their label rather than their actual feelings, and a lot of LGBTQ kids feel like their identity would be invalidated if they ever decided to change it, when in fact, they're still just exploring themselves. Unfortunately, it can sometimes be seen as a betrayal if you realize you're attracted to or not attracted to a particular gender, especially when conversion therapy and the belief that you can fix someone's sexuality or gender is still such a big thing. This isn't just limited to kids, of course. You can be an adult and realize you're attracted to a gender that you previously never were as well. Yup, sexuality is fluid and complicated. I get it's a concern, for Kay probably, that she's enforcing the it's just a phase mentality, but it's not on her to live in some way that magically undoes bigotry. She couldn't do that anyway. She thought that it fit her, and now it doesn't. It's that simple. Our next post is titled, Am I the a-hole for not forgiving my daughter? Me and my daughter used to be best friends. We did everything together. She truly was the light of my life, but things started to change on her teens. Moodiness, lashing out, lies, etc. I just thought that it had to do with her age, that she would grow out of it. I really tried everything like family therapy, long talks about how much I loved her. None of it worked. She would either roll her eyes back or spit more of her venom. My husband works really long hours and isn't much help to be honest. My husband is white, I am black, and my daughter is mixed. But she looks white, and she really takes after her father. This is relevant. I really don't know what I did wrong, but her dislike for me began to become pure hatred. She would question all the time how someone like me could be her mother when she was white and I was black. At some point, she even demanded a DNA test. I said sure, if she paid for it. She was not pleased with the results. She's 17 now and has begun dating this white boy and she is head over heels for him. She refused to let me meet him and told me that having a, <clears throat> excuse my French here, jobless N-word for a mother truly ashamed her. I am a stay-at-home mom. I don't think I have ever experienced such pain. It's not something you want to hear from your kid. That's absolutely for sure. Long story short, I couldn't take her abuse anymore and decided to go back to my family in Cuba. My daughter couldn't be bothered to even say goodbye to me. A few days ago, I received a message from my daughter asking for forgiveness, lots of things about how she can't fit in, is in a really dark place, and just lots of excuses. It may sound cold, but I don't want to see her face. I don't care about her apologies. I thought that I had made the right decision, but my husband thinks that I should really hear her out and forgive her. My family has been harassing me to go back to Miami and make peace with her, especially mother. And friends have been reaching out and have even called me a crappy mum for not forgiving her and how I must have done something for her to behave like she did. My anxiety has been over the roof. I'm back on my pills now. Is this really my fault? Am I the a-hole? In the comments, not the a-hole. As a mixed person, I would never say that to my black parent and would never say that to anyone, period. 
She's your daughter, so I wouldn't kick her out of your life forever, not that you were implying that, but remember this and don't forgive her right away. I would suggest therapy or time away for yourself. Also, you are not a crappy mom. Yeah, if she's 17 just now, then I'd say she may grow into a totally different person than the kid who treated OP like this. I'm also mixed and cannot imagine saying this to a parent. A lot of young teens say and do horrific crap, feel bad, and learn from it, and then grow into decent adults. Definitely needs to be therapy and get into why she was acting like this, healing wounds, discussing seemingly enabling dad, etc. But nobody will fault you if it takes you a while before you even want that. I have to wonder who is filling the daughter's head with this crap. Does this come from her school, social media, etc.? It may be better if the daughter flew down to see the OP, paid for by both parents. That way she can meet her mum's side of the family and see what life is like for them to get to know the Cuban side a bit better. OP isn't required to uproot her life just because the daughter has had a sudden change of heart. Daughter has to earn it. Absolutely not the a-hole. I hate to say it, but your daughter has been emotionally abusing you and your husband seems to be complicit in this abuse. Not the a-hole. And even attempting to defend someone who would call their own mother such vitriolic words and not even apologize for it at 7 effing teen is completely insane. Right? I could see maybe an 8 year old doing this, though I would hope most of those would be better behaved. You could see an 8 year old calling their parents a jobless... <laughs> GTA teaches kids some horrible words nowadays. I mean, sure, but those words sound way more likely to come from a teenager than an 8-year-old. Not the a-hole, but please consider it. Not for your daughter's sake, but for your own. Holding on to this pain and hurt is not good for your mental health, and if you can reconcile with your daughter, I think it would do a lot towards helping with your anxiety. Forgiving doesn't mean forgetting. You don't have to sweep the hurtfulness under the rug and pretend that it didn't happen. You can tell your daughter that she is forgiven, but that she will have to regain your trust over time by making amends for her actions, but that you are willing to give her that chance. Forgiveness is not absolving her of guilt for her actions, but instead is you making the decision not to hold on to your own pain and resentment. If your daughter truly is repentant, then by holding on to this, you are just depriving yourself of a relationship with your daughter that could be both fulfilling and cathartic. Please consider giving her another chance. If her bad behavior continues, you can always step back again and leave. But at least this way you know that you did everything possible, which may give you some peace of mind at the very least. And now onto the update. I know it's been three years, but several people still asked me about it because they saw my post on TikTok or other media. So I wanted to make this post to thank everybody who gave me such kind and sensible advice three years ago. Even though I didn't reply, I did read most of the replies, good or bad. And I'm thankful for all of you who encouraged me to give my daughter a second chance. I'll summarize it. I went back to Miami and she gave me a heartfelt apology and explained all the dark things her boyfriend was getting her into. We got into therapy once again, and she left her abusive relationship, and these past three years, our relationship has become better than ever. It was not easy, but it was definitely worth it. I'm glad I didn't give up. Thanks, Reddit. And now in the comments. She demanded a DNA test before she met with the white supremacist boyfriend? The abuse got bad enough for OP to leave the country? And the father did absolutely nothing about any of this? I have so many questions. I'm genuinely curious what caused the daughter to have a come to Jesus moment. She sounded absolutely terrible in the original post. Yeah, I assumed she was dealing with some deep-seated internalized racism. A lot of mixed kids get confused because they are half white, but no one acknowledges that. They don't get to be in that box and have to be half of whatever else they are. They can feel othered from that box too, and they often are. I could totally see a white passing mixed kid wanting to just be seen as white and becoming a very racist person. Yeah, some combo of passing and maybe wanting to be considered one of the good ones, putting down her mother for not working outside the home and being visibly black with some of the worst stereotypes about laziness, 
but the white supremacists would never quite let her forget she's got even one drop of black blood. Well, this is a weird ass sentence, but thank God she was just being indoctrinated. Knowing that your own kid could become racist, whatever your skin color is, is horrifying and depressing, especially since 17 is basically the pinnacle of hard-headed, selfish thinking, and they may very well move out soon. The fact that she came to the realization on her own is wonderful news, though it doesn't negate the damage that she did. At least there is a path forward. If this wasn't 2019, I would think that scumbag boyfriend was a tater tot. It's depressing how children today have to deal with people like that puddle of crap being popular, both those that are brainwashed due to their lack of judgment, and those that suffer from the misogynistic views that he imparts. What's a tater tot in this context? I loathe to speak his name and summon the flying monkeys, but a follower of Andrew Tate. I'm happy that everything worked out, but so upset that this woman had no support and her feelings were invalidated. By her own friends and family. I'm glad she got support from Reddit, but not having support in real life must have been devastating. Posted by user FunControl8549 titled, Am I the a-hole for calling my sister a misogynist and telling her that she needs to find a different career? My, 26 female, sister, 29 female, and I got into a huge argument the other day, and I really need some perspective. My sister has been working as an L&D nurse for a few years now. She has always wanted to be a nurse, and has even said that it was her calling. Lately, she has been making horrible remarks about the mothers that come to her. Now, I understand that every job is going to have its problems, and sometimes you need to vent about rude people, management, pay, etc. However, this was not like that. For example, she talked about one of her patients, which she referred to as White Whale. My sister said that White Whale went into labor and brought her husband with her. She talked about how hot her husband was, and how she could not understand how Whale was able to pull someone like him. She laughed when recalling the sounds that she made when pushing out her child, oh my god, and said that she didn't look like the type of woman to be strong enough to go the natural route. In the past, she's talked about how another mum-to-be defecated on the table, and she remarked that she wouldn't be surprised if her husband divorced her after seeing something so nasty. Other stories included a teenage patient who just couldn't keep her legs closed. Here, my sister claimed that she gave her some sound advice, quote-unquote, and I'm honestly scared to know what she had said to this young girl. With this girl, my sister laughed about she gave her a nurse dose of pain meds to get her to shut up and refuse to give her a blanket, since if she wants to act like an adult, then she deserves to be treated like one. The fight between her and I happened a few days ago due to her talking about a mother who delivered a premature baby. She admitted that she told this mother that she should have done a better job if she didn't want to have a baby born at 29 weeks. I blew up at my sister and asked how she could be so heartless. My sister told me that she should have the right to vent about stupid mothers who don't know how to do the thing their body is designed for. She also said that I don't work in healthcare, so I have no right to remark on how she handles stress at work. I told her that if her way of handling stress is to be a misogynist, then she needs to find a different career, and I left afterwards. My other family members have been divided on this issue. My husband is on my side. My mum and brother think that I was in the right to call my sister out, while my aunt, uncle and dad are leaning towards my sister, saying that my sister shouldn't have to kiss up to her patients in order to do her job efficiently. I feel bad for some of the things I said, and I know that she needs to let off steam, but saying horrible things about women in their most vulnerable time just isn't cutting it for me. In addition, my family does not know this yet, but I'm pregnant. And hearing about how my sister, a nurse, is treating pregnant women just makes me scared for labor and delivery. So, am I the a-hole? Personally, I'm gonna say not the a-hole in this situation. I don't understand why these people are defending her. I could understand why they're defending her if they're complicit in these actions and they sympathize with the words that are coming out of this woman's mouth. What a horrible human being. Like, what an absolutely horrible human being your sister is. That's the kind of attitude that if the hospital staff is competent and they are paying attention, she gets kicked out of teams and fired from that place. At least, in a perfect world, I would hope so. But unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world, do we? 
How does you calling out her bad behavior make you an asshole? Oh my god, you're such a you're such a loser for pointing out all the wrong things that I've done and the terrible treatment of my patients. You should keep your ass closed because you're a bad person for pointing out my flaws. That's the argument I'm seeing here. Anyway, not the a-hole, let's see what Reddit has to say. Oh yeah, before we get into that, OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I think I might be the asshole here because I yelled at my sister when she was venting, because I know that as a nurse, her job can be difficult. At the same time, she was saying horrible things about her patients and making misogynistic remarks. I don't agree that yelling would make you an asshole, but hey, that's just me, I guess I'm weird like that. In the comments, oh my god, not the a-hole, and you should report her to her accreditation body. She's not just venting, she's recounting instances of her hideously inappropriate behavior. No one should be subjected to care like that. Gay to be included replies, this exactly. As someone who worked in healthcare, I could never imagine speaking this way about patients. Bury Me in Books replies, 100%. All my L&D education is from Mama Dr. Jones on YouTube, and even I know that every woman craps on the table after vaginal birth. That's how the body works. You squish and squish and it all comes out. Then on top of that, what is a nurse dose? Is that too much or too little medication because, either way, it sounds like the wrong thing. And if she wants to act like an adult, she doesn't get a blanket? Should we send your sister out into the Canadian winter with no jacket then? Because it's clear that she wants to act like an adult too, and honestly, that might help some patients. Venting is telling everyone about the guy who came into my work so high that he thought that I was a pilot because of my white business shirt uniform. This is not that. This sounds like she's genuinely angry at her patients and is treating them wrongly. FYI, this is not what any nurse I have been around has acted like, and I'm Canadian, so I've seen a bunch. Rosycat220803 says, Your sister sounds cruel and heartless, and I feel so bad for every patient who ever has to deal with her. Really, such a person deserves to be removed from this job because she's probably doing a lot of psychological damage to people like that teenage girl that you mentioned, and just overall the way she speaks to you about everything, it's clear she has no empathy or even human decency, really. Not the a-hole, but if I were in your place, I would report her to management. Back up to the post, we have an edit. Okay, hi everybody. First, thank you all for the advice, support, and the well wishes for our pregnancy. I'm about 11 weeks along right now, and so I do plan on telling our families in a week or so. With the issue regarding my sister, I don't have too many updates yet, other than the fact that my husband and I called the hospital where my sister works, and essentially explained what my sister has said about her patients to me. I went into detail about what I could remember, and just reported it. They thanked me for letting them know, but I don't know what further action they would take. My sister is taking the night shift tonight, and she has yet to call me screaming, so we will see what occurs in the next few days. I'll give you an update soon. Edit number two. Okay, hey. So, this afternoon, the hospital that I called yesterday called us back this afternoon, and essentially gave me a link to online and asked me to fill out a detailed written complaint specifically about what my sister had said about the teenage patient and the nurse dose, something they didn't know about. It's something that they are taking very seriously, and the teenage patient was apparently fairly recent. The guy on the phone also alluded that the family of the patient also made a complaint, so I guess they're just trying to see if the events occurred matched what we have to say. Someone is also going around asking the unit about what exactly happened with that patient's care and if they saw anything or if anything was said. And now on to the update. Okay, hi again everyone. First, thank you again to everyone who commented and gave me advice on how to best navigate this situation. I tried to write this update in a separate post, but the mods wouldn't let me, so here I am at the bottom of my original post again, giving you guys an update. To sum it all up, shit hit the fan. This morning, my sister came over to where me and my husband live and started banging at our door. My husband opened the door and my sister barged her way in, screaming. I came into the living room where she was, and she started screaming at me more. My husband had to stand in front of me because he was worried that she was going to lunge at me. My sister was yelling about how she lost her job because of some bullshit reports, and that she knows that it was me talking crap about her because I just couldn't stay out of her business. 
I replied that it was my business if she was bullying pregnant women and then bragging about it. My sister told me to F off, and she said once again that she could talk about anyone any way she effing likes as long as she gets her job done because that's what she went to school for and that I don't know crap. I reminded my sister that I actually might know some more crap since, oh, I don't know, a certain teenager's family had something to say about her behavior as well. My sister proceeded to go on a rant about that beer and her family and how she was supposedly annoying her by giving birth? I had trouble processing what she said because it was honestly mind-boggling. And here's where things got really crappy. I thought that my sister saying horrible things about her patients who hadn't done anything wrong was mean. I thought that the nicknames were cruel. I thought that her telling laboring mothers that they weren't doing things right and dosing a teenager and slut-shaming was vile and yes, misogynistic. However, it was about to get atrocious. During my sister's rant, she said that she wanted to teach the brat a lesson and said that maybe if she gave birth when she was older, her kid wouldn't have died. Oh, <laughs> no, you can't say that. My mouth dropped open. I didn't know this before. That poor girl, her baby effing died. I was horrified. I fell to the floor sobbing, imagining that child in so much pain, and my pregnancy hormones combined got to me, and I was on the floor having a panic attack. I told my sister to get the F out of my home, and my husband escorted her out. My husband held me for a good 15 minutes until I calmed down. So yeah, I'm recovering from all of that now. I don't plan on talking to my sister for a while, I do plan on announcing the pregnancy soon, but I'm pulling that off until later. Anyways, thank you for your advice, concerns, and well wishes. Peace. In the comments, quote, the bit about I wanted to teach that brat a lesson and if she was older, in conjunction of the nurse's dose crap, makes me wonder if she didn't do something to the baby. And OP replies, from the way my sister was talking about it, I think it was unrelated and that the baby died because the mum's body just wasn't ready for childbirth, question mark. I don't know when she gave the pain medication to her, but it could have been after the birth as well, assuming there were complications. I'd just like to think that she wouldn't go that far. Oh my god, what a... <laughs> oh, I can't deal with this. What a terrible person, what an absolutely morally bankrupt individual this sister is. This story is just a house fire that I don't want to look away from, if you catch my drift. Faith in humanity destroyed. Yet another story of what is there to say. I guess the comments have something, let's see what they say. Gendered says, I work psychiatry and sometimes have to clean poop off of people while they are actively trying to hurt me and calling me every slur they can think of, and this is still unfathomable to me. Rawrist replies, I've got certifications to volunteer with people with traumatic brain injuries, have never in decades of my life thought to abuse them verbally and physically, even when they're saying and doing horrific crap. Oh my god, that nurse is inhuman. Nurse Gray replies, yes, I've been a nurse for 20 years. The scariest thing about this for me is that this nurse didn't get this crappy alone. She has been enabled in whatever toxic culture she works in. I guarantee that there is a gaggle of nurses that she joked with at work that said these same vile things and played these dangerous games with the people in their care. She was way too comfortable spouting that crap to have been alone. The nurse dose she's talking about means that she deliberately overdosed someone which could kill someone. I hope she never works in the nursing field again. I have never worked in an environment like that and I never will. Ginger Brugia replies, I don't know why, but L&D attracts the mean girls of nursing. I used to be a float nurse, and I hated getting sent there because of all the cattiness. We've all vented in the med room about our patients, but no one on my unit would ever talk about patients like that. A name is needed here says, If she hates pregnant women so much, why would she work in a maternity ward? I just don't understand. Did the sister learn that she can't get pregnant so she's using this to vent out her stress? Did she miscarry and is now pissed at women who quote, don't take care of themselves? I don't get why she's so hateful to these women and why she works there. There's definitely some unresolved trauma there. Hopefully she can get a therapist and then apologize to her sister and the people she hurt. But if this is her default state, then wow, 
Just wow. CJ Craig's Goldfish says, I'm a social worker and the number of colleagues I've had who openly despised the people we were serving is well into double digits. I'll never understand why people who hate the disadvantaged go into a field that exists to help the disadvantaged. This is slash J, this is not slash SRS, but I want to give the sister a nurse dose of something if you know what I'm saying. What an outrageous story. Let me know what you guys think in the comments because I am befuddled. Absolutely.